Pirates fight for old southwestern, so I'm a modern deer. Pirates fight for old southwestern, so southwestern will be loyal to the sun from from the sky. And remember to the end that a fight will never die. Pirates fight. Good afternoon and welcome to Southwestern Pirates Football on Homecoming Weekend here on the Vibe Live Network. My name is Merle Bertrand coming to you live from Berkabach Field in Georgetown, Texas. Joined today once again by T.J. Vale and Chuck Crazy down at the sidelines. Our producer Melvin Jones, uh, West Clary RQA, and T.J. It's a new conference, which means new opponents. How exciting is it to face someone for the very first time as a player? It's very exciting, Merle. It's like getting your crush's number for the very first time. It's super exciting. And a new conference means new games, new opponents, and new opportunities to prove yourself. And for this Pirates sure. still searching for their first win, that's the most important thing for them. Well, uh, we're going to hear from our, our intrepid sideline reporter, Chuck, Chuck Crazy, down there on the field. Chuck, do you, uh, do you got us? And hopefully you can hear us. I wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, last time we were here was an evening game. Now it's the middle of the day. What's it like down there on the field, Chuck? It's so hot he doesn't have his earpiece in. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, revisit Chuck here in a little bit. But, uh, um, you know, TJ, we talked about the heat. It's going to yep. be hot. Be, Melvin, last night, we were out in Houston. Melvin and I were, and he's like, it's the last night of summer. <laughs> Cooler weather is coming. Nope. Not just yet. It's about 102 degrees down there on the field. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things when you play here in Texas, you have to be used to the heat. And so for this Southwestern team who's gone through fall camp, they've gone through the first few weeks of August, of September, I don't think the heat for them, like they, this is what they're used to. Right. They've played in this for weeks. It'll be a big thing, though, like you said, just staying hydrated, making sure that you are doing the things before the game so your body is ready to actually play in the game um, and so you don't experience any of the negative side effects of this heat. Well, uh, uh, before we go into the pregame interview with uh, Coach Austin that recorded earlier in the week, I want to give a shout-out to Michael Rose and Harlan Hudson, our camera operators today. Uh, without them, you'd just be listening to us. So uh, <laughs> thank you to those folks. So we're about to, oh, 15 minutes away from kickoff. I want to make sure that we allow plenty of time to get that interview in. So uh, let's go right to it, Melvin. We'll hear from uh, so uh, Southwestern head coach Joe Austin right now on the pregame show. Hey, we'll please be joined once again in the pre-game show by the head coach of the Southwestern Pirates, Coach Joe Austin. Coach, good to see you again. Uh, we good talked on the show on uh, Monday night. Uh, the Pirates got off to a decent start and a good second half against uh, uh, against the Hendricks up in Arkansas last week. But that eight-minute stretch in the second quarter kind of kind of killed the game for the Pirates. Valiant enough to come back, uh, but Southwestern falling 51 to 38. Your thoughts after having a chance to look at the film and all that kind of stuff? Well, one of the things is that we always fight. <laughs> we, right. There's there's no give up in our football team. And that's a great thing to have as a foundation. Uh, you said it, that, that eight minutes was really bad. Otherwise, it was very even, or we were even a little bit better throughout the game. But they count all 60 minutes, not right. just the ones that, that you want to count. Um, for people that, that have watched our football team, they know exactly the things you have to work on. We said it on the show on Monday. Sometimes you have to have someone analyze it for you and go <laughs> deep into the dive of the film and analytics. It's pretty simple. We have to stop turning the ball over and we have to play pass defense. Those are the two major things that have, have held us back this year, and so that's what we'll be working on. Well, we're talking to you on Wednesday afternoon, so you've had a couple of practices since the show. Have you started to see some movement in that direction, or is it kind of hard to tell from just a couple of practices? Well, I think as far as our pass defense we have, um, and we'll probably talk about this later on when we ask mm -hmm. you about Birmingham Southern, uh, but there's going to be some lineup changes. Uh, there's some guys that have been pushing and are ready to, to break through and, and – Hopefully they're going to perform this weekend. Well, both quarterbacks came in, did a good job, had a couple of mistakes in there. The running game looked really strong with four running backs coming in, contributing all across the field. Talk about how your offense has developed here for the first three games. When we have the ball, we're good. Right. We're averaging over 400 yards a game on offense. We're averaging 27 points, and that's despite 12 turnovers. Mm -hmm. So if we hang on to the football um, and end each drive with a kick, an extra point, field goal, or a punt, mm -hmm. 
we're we're in a position to be a, a pretty good offense, I think. Yeah, I kind of noticed that. I was watching the game, just kind of holding my breath as it got to the red zone. I was like, please finish the drive, right? <laughs> uh, and talk about the defense side. The run defense looked really good, except for the one uh, running play that they had. Uh, we'll talk about the pass defense uh, when we talk about Birmingham Southern. But talk about your, your run defense. That part of the game looks really strong right now. We, yeah, we, we missed fit one run, and it went for a long, a long run for them. Otherwise, it was pretty good. Now, I think we can go from pretty good to excellent. There, we, can, we can tackle a little bit better. Um, we can fit things up front with our linebackers and defensive linemen just a little bit better. But that's something that I think we're, we're doing well on defense. And we just want to get our guys to be just even a little bit more precise. So what I mean by that is instead of a three-yard game, let's make it a no game. Mm -hmm. Instead of a no game, let's make it a three-yard loss. That's the type of detail that we're asking for to, to really work hard and, and even improve that. Pretty good run defense, let's make it great. Well, the Pirates will play a district, or district conference game number two coming up uh, this week against Birmingham Southern. They'll make the trip. Uh, talk about the Panthers a little bit. You said some interesting stuff about their institution as a whole on the show Monday night. To talk about that for the folks who didn't get a chance to see it. Sure. We're happy to be playing the game. Yeah. Their school went through a lot of anxiety this summer about whether the school would close for forever or not. They've uh, got some different assistance privately, state government, and they are... They're open. The doors are open for the fall <laughs> semester, and they're playing football, and we're happy to be able to host them. They're a good football team, a playoff team two years ago, 7-3 and three last year, 1-2 uh, and two this year, but that's deceiving because they played uh, two really good teams in Huntingdon, who's always a playoff contender and, mm -hmm. and a nationally ranked team, and last week they played Trinity, who was ranked number six at the time, uh, and, and they're, they're a very good school. So it's a deceiving 1-2. and two. They played a really good schedule against two really good defenses. And you said, you look at the stat, they, they haven't scored a lot of points, but you said a lot is because who they're playing, right? Well, absolutely. People aren't going to score a lot of points against Huntington um, and Trinity week in and week out. So, uh, yeah, I think their offensive stats are a little bit misleading. They've got talented players. They've just, you know, had a tough, a tough road to hoe so far from an offensive perspective. Well, we teased that a couple of times. A couple of changes coming up for the Pirates uh, this weekend on both sides of the ball. A lot of young guys getting some action. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, uh, four and a half freshman starters on offense. Jalen Spriggs is going to make his first start at quarterback from an analytics standpoint, looking at both our quarterback play and an offense as a whole. Uh, Jalen's been the more productive of our, of our two quarterbacks over the first three games. You've got Sam Johnson continuing to start at H-back. You've got Graydon Thompson. Um, starting at receiver, who's had three really strong games, and Reed Robinson is a freshman that's been starting at right at right tackle. The the half is uh, Devin Phillips, who in his college debut last week in the second half at over 125 yards and a touchdown, he'll be in there uh, in a rotation of some other really strong running backs. Christian Reeves, a sophomore, is going to play his first game of the season. Uh, Sam LeBlue, a guy that we've seen every game, so it's going to be kind of a three-headed monster. Uh, at least that's the plan at running back of, of three pretty good players. On the defensive side, we're going to have two new uh, starters at corner, Quincy Nevins, who is a freshman, and DJ James, who is a transfer, um, are going to get their opportunity. They've been performing really well, uh, and, and they're ready to, to give it a go. Um, within the defensive secondary, we're also going to see Cam Roberson and Jameer Martin, two other really good freshmen. They're going to get some opportunities that they have earned in the defensive secondary. So. We're, you know, we've, as you talked about a lot, our, our past defense needs to improve, and we're counting on some of these young guys that have shown that they're capable to come in and do just that. You know, every coach always likes to look ahead with all that young talent. Uh, how, how are the young guys fitting in with all the, the veteran guys that have been around for a while? Something we work really hard on is, is what we call our brotherhood. Mm -hmm. It's one of our, one of our, our core virtues, and uh, you know, there's, there's no problem from that standpoint. We're, we're developing the internal competition that good teams have. I told the team in our meeting on Tuesday, if you want to know the secrets of Alabama and Ohio State, it's inter-team competition. It's the fact that they've got two, three, four, five guys stacked up that can really play. Mm -hmm. That means you have to practice harder and more accurately. That means you have to play accurately and get it done. And we're developing that at more and more positions, which is something we haven't always had since the COVID stoppage. We haven't been two or three deep in a lot of positions, and we're getting more of that. And while there is some anxiety for individual players who are getting pushed for the first time and have to str you know, struggle and fight and perform to keep their spot, it's an overall really good thing for mm -hmm. a football team. Well, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, homecoming coming up, that's always a big game. Uh, you, you know, you only get five games at home every year. How much more special is that homecoming to have all the folks there that only maybe come out to one game a year? Yeah, I think, I think it's really a fun thing. 
Um, it's always a great environment, great environment for tailgating. When we do our team parade two hours before kickoff through tailgate, the press box is just going to be jammed through the gills with, with people. Don't tell the fire marshal. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just going to be a good environment, a great afternoon for college football. Well, Coach, looking forward to it. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks. Pirates head coach Joe Austin, a guest here on the pregame show. We'll take a break and be back in time for the opening kick. You're watching Southwestern Pirates football on Vibe. And welcome back to Berkelbach Field here on the campus of Georgetown High School. Merle Bertrand here along with T.J. Vale and Mel uh, Melvin Jones, our producer uh, this afternoon. And uh, Coach Joe Austin's Pirates into this afternoon's game at 0-3 overall, 0-1 in the SAA after falling 51-38 at Hendricks College. Birmingham Southern makes their first trip to Georgetown. Head coach Anthony Colucci is in his first year at the helm of the Panthers. After six years as their offensive coordinator, his club comes in at 1-2 overall and 0-1 in conference play after number 6 Trinity Cruz passed them 38-3 last week and TJ Vale I guess it's pretty obvious but neither one of these teams can, can afford to fall to 0-2 in conference play. You're right Merle you can't afford to fall to 0-2 in conference play because the big thing when you think about how close this race is going to be towards the end of who's right. going to win this conference who's going to have a shot at making the playoffs if you lose more than one game like you're basically out of it so right now the Pirates this game is the most important game for them on the year right now. There's no next week. It is all right now for the Pirates. Well, we haven't really talked about it that much, but it is homecoming weekend. As a player, how do you channel that into extra motivation as opposed to having it, having it become a distraction? Well, as a player, it doesn't change. Homecoming doesn't change how you prepare. So the film study, um, studying your opponent, all that remains the same in the week. But as you progress, like what, let's say Friday night, and you start feeling the buzz around campus, that's right. where it's like, oh, okay, you know, you start to feel the homecoming vibes. And then once Saturday rolls around, as a player, I think you're even more focused to play because you have all these new fans out here who probably won't get another chance to see you this year. So you might want to turn it up a little bit. So you're going to focus a lot more, focus on your assignment, and maybe even up the theatrics a little more to entertain the crowd to make sure that they know they're watching Southwestern Pirate football. It kind of reminds me, Coach mentioned it on the show on Monday night, SU Football Weekly, about, you know, the alumni coming in. This might be the only game they see. It kind of yeah. reminds me of the Indianapolis 500. That's, <laughs> a, you know, that's the only IndyCar race that a lot of people will turn into once a year. So yeah. that's, that's a big deal, right? No, it is a big deal. Like, just today, I've already seen five guys who I used to play football with back here at Southwestern that I haven't seen even since last year. So it's one of those things that homecoming brings people to the game. They expect to see the Pirates win when it comes to homecoming. So, like I said, there is no next week. It is right now for the Pirates. Well, we're going to see if we got Chuck Crazy. We think we got him dialed out. Chuck, give me a thumbs up if you got me down there. I see it. All right, Chuck, I want to get your thoughts. You're down there on the field. We were kind of joking around about, you know, the first day of autumn. It's not really autumn uh, down there in the field, I'm guessing. What's it like down there? Feels like August, not uh, autumn. <laughs> Uh, I, my guess would be, you know, we're well in excess of 100 degrees on the surface and steamy. You know, we had a hot game earlier here at Berkelbach uh, a few weeks back, and it was warm. 
and muggy, but this is uh, worse because the sun's on you. On us. What, what, try, try, the answer. try to find some shade down there. There's not much. Uh, we're going to turn it over now to the PA for our national anthem. Uh, thank you, Chuck Crazy, down there. We'll talk to him between quarters, and we'll turn it over to the PA for our national anthem. Under the direction of Holly Dalrymple, Associate Professor of Music. Great job there on the National Anthem. You could hear the wind in the crowd, Mike. It is blustery, blowing hard from right to left. Game time temperature. I think I need to refresh my phone. It says 88. I know darn well it's not 88. 88 metric, maybe. Uh, while we got a minute uh, waiting for the opening kickoff and that kind of thing, we want to thank some of our sponsors, including Antioch of Georgetown, Baylor Scott & White Healthcare, Chappelle Realty Group, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Don Hewlett, Buick & Chevrolet, Double Dave's Pizza, Eagles Wings Home Improvement Services, First Texas Bank, Gary Brown CPA, John F. Lewis CPA, Mighty Fine Burgers, Fries, and Shakes, Miniman Press, Primerica Financial Solutions, Rudy's Barbecue, and Schlotsky's of Georgetown, Bricks and Ale at the Sheraton, Stephanie Featherstone with State Farm, Georgetown Shirt Company, HEB, House of Gains, Ross and Champion CPA, GTX Wealth, Jersey Mike Subs, and the League Kitchen and Tavern. You see the, ca the captain's Meeting there at midfield, Southwestern in their goldenrod jerseys with the black pants. Not wearing the home black today with it, with it being 94. My phone is updated now. That's one of the smarter moves I'd say we've already seen. Just not wearing <laughs> the all-black uniform as it looks like Chuck's ready for Coach Austin, Merle. All right, let's uh, take it away, Chuck. Sorry, I didn't see you down there. Take it away. Good evening. Okay, Coach, uh, you mentioned earlier in the week there were going to be some changes in the lineup. Uh, how have those players looked in practice this week? They've done that job, so hopefully they're going to take advantage of this opportunity and help us support check with the community to better so it's homecoming week always a big game a lot more alumni here today so, uh, have you been able to keep the distractions out of the team room and how they focus this week okay well, good luck today coach there you go merle back to you i know it's pretty windy down here that's probably being picked up by the mic yeah awful windy picking up the wind picking up the pa all that kind of stuff but i think we got the, the gist of it thank you chuck and we're about ready to go southwest, and we'll get the football first. They'll be going left to right into the teeth of this wind. And it'll be Jalen Springs, the freshman quarterback, getting his first start of the season. And Birmingham Southern making their way. They're in the, the road white jerseys and pants with the impossible-to-read gold numbers. If you like gold and black and maybe dark <laughs> blue, this this is the place to be. There's a lot of golden out here. It is, but I'm going to hear you talk all day about these numbers. I can already tell, Merle. It's uh, the second time already in like a 10-minute span you said something. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got the binoculars out. I'm, I'm ready. I, I've come prepared. I love it. Well, we got the email open, southwesternfb at gmail.com. Give us a shout-out and let us know where you tune to the broadcast from. Pirates 0-3, Panthers 1-2, both of them 0-1 in conference play and looking for that first win. You know, Southwestern, Coach mentioned on the show Monday night, they could very easily be 2-1 and 3-0 and and if they take care of the football better. They've won several halves. They just haven't put together a complete game. Yeah, I was talking to one of the coaches pregame, and he was saying if you literally take away 
a third of those turnovers. Yep. Statistically speaking, Southwestern wins those games that, they, that they've lost so far. So it's going to be a big theme today, ball security and playing fast consistently. And we'll see here as Southwestern is going to get the ball first if they can do both of those things. Looks like Cole Porch with the football on the tee. Kicking from right to left. He'll drive this one with the wind at his back, and it's a low line drive kick, but it's still going to sail into and out of the end zone. And we'll get a good look at the Pirates' offense. And yeah, Southwestern will take the field here, going first down and 10. Take a look at the offensive lineup there. In addition uh, to Spriggs getting the start of quarterback, we're going to get a good look at uh, a new running back. And another thing to keep an eye on is the new offensive line, too. They've had a lot of injuries this year, so they have right. some new guys starting. Trey Flores is out there. Anderson Johnson's not playing today. So it's going to be a lot of question marks that are going to need to be answered here today, Merle. Christian Reeves getting his first start at running back. He was working his way off of an injury. Spriggs dropping back, looking, pumping. Good protection. Fires over the right side and complete. Oh, incomplete. Had it briefly at the 32-yard line, but separated from the football. Dugan Sexton, the intended target, is going to bring up a second down and 10 from the 25-yard line just underway. And that was great coverage by Birmingham Southern. Jalen had a lot of time back there. He was basically like five seconds back there going through all his different reads, but just great coverage by Birmingham Southern, not allowing Southwestern receivers to get any space. Second down and 10. One receiver wide left trips here to the near side. And Spriggs going to keep it himself, and who hit hard. Spins free, though, across out to the 30. Cuts it back up to the 35, hanging out of the football, out to the 40-yard line. That one looked like about a two-yard pickup, and after the big contact and no wrap, Spriggs made him pay the price. See, that's the thing with Spriggs. You have to wrap him up if you're going to bring him down. You can't just hit him. He's a big body in and of himself. So if you just hit him, he's going to eat that. He's going to absorb that, and just like we saw there, spin around and run for a first down for his Pirates. Just a freshman coming in here, making his first career start. On the season, 26 out of 40, 397 yards, three touchdowns with three interceptions. And there's a handoff up to the line of scrimmage and pushing it forward for a yard or two Christian goes Reeves. Christian Reeves. Going to bring up a second down and about eight yards to go, make it nine from the 42-yard line. And Reeves is someone that we haven't seen a lot of this year, Merle, but he's going to be someone that the Pirates are going to start relying on a lot more. Some injuries have kept him back here in the start of the season, but here in his sophomore campaign, expect big things from him. Yeah, we saw good things from him late in the season last year. Second down and nine. Play action pass. Briggs swings it out right side. And Reese, late reaction, but he caught it out to the 45. Stays in bounds. Tippy toes out about the 49-yard line. I was holding my breath, TJ. I didn't think he saw the ball coming at first. No, his eyes were looking downfield. And at the last moment, he just turned his head around, did a 360, caught it. I don't know how he did that right there. But <laughs> luckily enough for him in his Pirates offense, he did catch it and got it all the way down to make it a third and one for his team. Good job by him. Well, Bob Mask is making it easy, easy from us. Got the email from the Mask Men. Oh, man. Some third, Batman out there. Third down and one. Spriggs pitch out right side to Reeves, and he's going to cut it up. Has a first down and more inside the 45, down to the 44-yard line. First down, Pirates. Email says, go Bucks for coach from dad and granddad. Oh, so they both they both got us today. We don't have to they, wait they, for the separate emails. Yeah, they, they knew we were confused, so <laughs> they, they bailed us out. I love it. So already two first downs here on their first drive. Merle, we hadn't seen the Southwestern offense get a first down in their first drive all right. year. And here they already have two. Moving down the field, just sent away first quarter, no score on homecoming weekend. Fans still filing in, late break from the tailgate. Spriggs, pitch out left side, cutting it up to 45, inside down to the 40. That was Samuel Johnson, another freshman, 6'1", 197-pounder from Flower Mound up near Dallas, picking up four yards on the play, second down and six from the 41-yard line. And if these Southwestern fans tailgated right, hopefully they'll, they're a little rowdier today and a little more juiced up, Merle. And I also hope they brought their sunscreen. <laughs> oh, they're wearing long sleeves. They got the umbrellas. <laughs> I see the Bucky's umbrella out there. You'll spot Bucky's, Bucky's anything, anytime, anywhere. Hand off. Inside the 40 and breaking tackle, diving down to the 35-yard line. Johnson again on the carry. Pirates moving right down the field. Looks like he's just shy of the first down. Third down and one from the 35. And the last time the Pirates had this third and one situation, we had an option to the right. We'll see here if Coach Austin and Coach Mass, the offensive coordinator, want to keep that same uh, mindset going here with the option. I believe that was Devin, Devin Phillips actually on the last carry. He's lined up to the right side now. 
Spriggs dropping back to swing it out to him. And off the fingertips would have been good for a first down. And now it's decision time. Fourth down coming up from the 35-yard line. And I think here, Merle, thir- fourth and one at your at the the Birmingham Southern 35-yard line, might as well go for it. You know, it's one of these things. Your offense has been moving the ball so well. Let's try our hand. Let's try our luck. Maybe even a hard count here to get Birmingham Southern to jump. Especially going into the teeth of this win. So fourth down and one from the 35-yard line. It'll be a 52-yard field goal, so probably not much of a decision. Spriggs, handoff up the middle. Ooh, hit hard, and I don't know. It's going to be close. The official coming in from the near side looks like he might have it. Southwestern certainly indicating that they do. The Panthers are saying otherwise. It doesn't matter what they think, though. And they'll give it to him. First down. You know it's hot when you don't want to bring the chains across the field for a measurement. <laughs> I just think there was no doubt left on that one. And that's such a big momentum play right there. Yep. If you have that young offensive line that I alluded to earlier, and you get a big fourth down play like that, you get those extra yards, you get that first down. That's so huge for the mindset, Merle, especially early in this contest. So first down and 10 from the 34-yard line. Drive continues, 11.30 to go. It's already chewed up three and a half minutes off the clock. Two receivers left, one to the near side. Hand off up the middle. Big hole inside the 30. Spins inside the 25. Almost broke it down to the 24-yard line. Once again, that was Devin Phillips. And Phillips had just one more tackle to miss, and he would have had pay dirt in the end zone. Yep. Right there that last second, the Birmingham Southern defender got his shoelace and pulled him down. If not, we would have been singing the fight song here in a few seconds. Can do a lot on second and one from the 25. A lot of options open here. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Spriggs. Handoff. Going to have the first down. Bullhorning his way down to the 20-yard line. That'll be good for a Pirate first down. And right there, Merle, Birmingham Southern had seven people in the box, four down linemen, three linebackers, and they still couldn't stop the run. Yep. It was still a great chunk of yardage got there on that inside run. So right now, this young offensive line, <laughs> they're not playing like they're young. They're playing like they're seasoned veterans. Yeah, moving them off the ball. Phillips again on that carry. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Two receivers left, one here to the near side. Spriggs, zone read, looking, got a receiver open, wide open, caught, touchdown Pirates. And Southwestern not only has their first lead of the ball game, they have their first lead of the season. Yeah, first lead of the season, first touchdown on the first drive. That was such a well-designed play right there, Merle. You go back through this whole drive, they're running the ball to the outside, they're running the ball up the middle. Birmingham Southern still had seven people in the box. When they run that play action and get them shifting out, there was just nothing for the defenders to do in the secondary. Our receiver wide open the end zone, and all Spriggs had to do was just give it to him. Vance Mills on the receiving end of that. Another freshman, 5'11", 165-pounder out of New Braunfels. Charlie Fournier on for the extra point. Low snap, good hold, kick is up. And he splits the upright. So 10-22 to go first quarter. Good start for the Pirates, up 7-0. I like what I see. I love what I see right now, Merle. And I think now it's just a deep breath. Like you got your first touchdown here on homecoming. Yeah, on your first drive, your freshman quarterback throwing to your freshman wide receiver. And now, we just got to play football. That's all it is. Rely on this defense that has done so well for you all year long. Just keep it rolling. We'll see how the Pirate defense responds playing downhill for the first time this season. Running defense has been solid. The uh, pass defense has been a little shaky, and Coach Austin talked about it on the show. A number of new guys getting the start in the secondary. So uh, we'll see how that plays out here today. Yeah, and it's something we've said all year. That front four. That line with Marion Williams-Jack, you have Malik McDonald, you have the linebackers, Alec Gomez, Blaine Corkin. Those guys are some of the most solid defenders I've ever seen in the Southwestern history. But to what you're saying, that secondary a little shaky, a lot of blown coverages so far in these first three games. It's going to be on them today to play fast and not allow anything to get behind them and allow big plays to happen. So we'll see what Fournier does here from the 35-yard line, kicking into the teeth of the wind. The short high pooch kick, that's going to be a live football, and the fair catch wisely called. Oh, he dropped it. That's a live football and falling out of the 18-yard line. That takes care of the fair catch. That cost him about 17 yards. Yeah, that, that must have been scouted right there. That kid cannot catch a cold because he dropped that fair catch easily and gets great field position for this Pirates defense. So they can pin their knees back a little bit. Let's take a quick look here, if you can, Melvin, at the Birmingham Southern offense. 
And then we'll follow that up by the Pirate defense. Birmingham Southern led by junior quarterback Matt McClary, 40 out of 80, 584 yards, two touchdowns and a couple of picks. Going up against a Pirate defense that's given up 43.7 points per game. Looking to improve on those numbers here today. Hand off left side, looking for running room. And as we mentioned, oh, we got the quarterback captain to the 40, the 45, to the 50, the 45, 40. He's going to go all the way, I believe, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Fooled everybody. He fooled everybody except me, Merle. You <laughs> saw it. You saw, saw it. I saw him pull it because when you have a defensive line, like I was saying, that is so good, they're also very aggressive. And right there, McClary used that against Southwestern. He saw the defensive end of Southwestern go down to the run immediately, pulled it wisely, and by that time there was no one on the right side except for the one corner covering the receiver. And at that point, just don't get caught. And that was not Matt McClary. That was Smith Kuhn, the wide receiver that took that one of the house number nine. I don't know if he lined up in the wildcat possibly. And the extra point is blocked. So the Pirates will maintain their lead with a 10 8 to go, but the score is 7-6. So we'll take a quick break. We're off to a fast start here. You're watching Southwestern Pirates football on the Viper Live Network. Well, first off, thank you for being here. Crosby's second state championship appearance. How does that sound? We are off to a wild start, TJ Vale. The Pirates are a long drive matriculating down the field they punch it in first play from scrimmage Birmingham Southern answers right back just a tale of two offenses right there completely different but the end result's still the same touchdown for both teams and Pirates going to get the ball back here with 10 minutes to go in the first this kickoff is going to sail into and out of the end zone again so Southwestern <laughs> offense will come right back out of the field That's good coaching by Birmingham Southern. You know, Southwestern working all week on Matt McClare. They come out in a wildcat right away and a well-executed fake handoff, and he was wide open. You're probably the only person in the stadium that saw him. Yeah, and I thought that there was going to be someone to get him, but they didn't see him. So no. it just be turned into, oh, man, I guess we're just going to watch him run to the end zone right here. Byers did a great job stopping the halfback. Problem was he didn't have the football. <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. So 10 away to go first quarter, 7-6 Southwestern, handoff up the middle, and a big hole again across the 30, out to the 33-yard line. Pirates getting it down on the ground. That was Demarion Wigginton, a sophomore. He's an old man of this uh, running back group. <laughs> it is a deep running back group, and that's what the good thing is. I think next to the defensive line for Southwestern, the running back core right. is some of the deepest and some of the most talented. And so it's going to be exciting to see what they can do, not just today, but the rest of the year. Colby Bartlett, the leading running back, not even in action today. Handoff straight up the middle, out across the 35 to the 36. That'll be good for a two-yard pickup and a first down for the Pirates. So Jalen Spriggs picking up right where he left off, leading this Pirates team, getting more first downs, wearing down this Birmingham Southern defense. Not really airing it out because the Gale Force wind's blowing from right to left. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily his strength. He can throw the ball, but I want to say he's a better runner than he is thrower. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Spriggs going to keep it himself in the nice zone read. Dies off to across the 35, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. And that's about it. Second down and 10 coming up. And that's the first play we've seen from this Pirates offense that hasn't gained more than two, three yards. Big second and 10 here for them. One receiver left, two to the near side. Jalen Spriggs, a freshman from Fort Worth, All Saints Episcopal School up there. Low snap, goes down and gets it. Pump fake. Now the pocket breaking down. Chunks it over here to the right side. Dangerous pass, but caught. Worked out for him to the 49-yard line. I don't know how in the world that one got through, but it did. 
And a great catch by the running back out of the backfield, Devin Phillips, to bail him out first down Southwestern. I think Jalen Spriggs has the broadcast in his helmet right now. He said, shut up, TJ. You say I can't <laughs> pass. You say I'm more of a runner. I'm just going to throw this one right over the top, right to my running back for a huge first down for his team. Great job. Great play by Spriggs, throwing off his back foot and putting it right on the target. And a good job by Phillips going to get it. When that ball left yeah. the hand, I thought that's an interception for sure. Yeah, and that linebacker luckily looked lost, so he, he didn't know the ball was even coming to him. Hand off left side and falls forward for a yard or two, does Delvin Phillips. Nope, they're going to give him the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Where the knee touchdown. So second down and 10 for the Pirates. Noah Lloyd Cohn checking in on the email, southwesternfb at gmail.com. Says, happy Saturday, fellas. Noah from the University of Miami here. like to give a shout-out to Jake Sefcik and Graydon Thompson. Go Pirates. You know, as a fellow Hurricane, I just love that we have a fan from the University of Miami. That's, of course, where I went to go get my MBA. That's why I can say that I'm a pirate for life, but also a hurricane. Polite way saying he's got a split personality. Pass the left side and dropped at the 45-yard line. That would have been a short gain of about three yards. You know, my ex-girlfriend told me that once, Merle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was a good play right there with the Pirates. Just never really developed in a tough pa pass to catch there if you're the receiver. So third down and 10 coming up here from the 48-yard line. Fans still filing in. Two receivers left here to the near side. Spriggs dropping back. Good protection this time. Now he's going to step it up, breaks the tackle. Bounce to the outside to the 45 and knocked down at the 43. It's going to set up an interesting fourth and five. You know, that run made it a lot more manageable. I think fourth and 10 you definitely don't go for, but fourth and five you could but still, I think here, Coach Austin sending out the punting unit wants to pin this Birmingham Southern defense, or offense, excuse me, back hopefully near their goal line. Yep, Charlie Fournier trotting on the junior from Austin Vandergrift. Averaging 30 yards per punt. Put one out of 10 inside the 20. That's what he's trying to do here. Good snap back. Good protection, and it launches the punt. Going to land at about the 15-yard line. Takes a pirate roll inside the five, and they keep it in play. They do. They're going to down at the one. No, they're going to say touchback. Mm. Delay call by the official. Nice job by the return man, TJ, because the Pirates are zoning in on the football. He actually blocked a pirate defender to keep them keep him from getting to the football. Yeah, right at the last second he blocked. I think that's Alec Gomez. Yeah. Hit him just enough to get him away from the ball, and he would have been the first one to go touch it. So unfortunately for the Pirates and unfortunately for Charlie Fournier, that is not down inside the 20. Pretty well executed. Just didn't get the uh, the lucky bounce the way they wanted. So first down and 10 for Birmingham Southern from the 20. And I'm going to actually look through the binoculars and make sure who's in at quarterback. There he is, Matt McClary. Hands it off right side and... As I started to call last time they had the football, the Pirate running defense doing a great job knocking down Kobe Hughes for a loss of about a yard in the play. Going to bring up a second down at 11. Hughes, 21 of 118, 5.2 yards per carry for the junior running back. They give him line of scrimmage, so second and 10. That's some good yardage right there per carry. Yeah, it is. Hopefully this Pirates defense, that front four, can limit that and reduce that average. So Hughes split out wide right, dropping back. Pass over to the right side and overshot his intended target. He was behind the defense. Pirates catch a bit of a break there, and they've got them pinned down now, third down and 10 from the 20. Yeah, if McClary's on target there, that is a first down and probably a lot more. Yeah. Because there was no one over there near the running back for Birmingham Southern. So a big third down here for the Pirate defense, third and 10 from the 20. It's third and 10. McClary in the shotgun. Hughes lined up to his right. Trips here to the near side. One to see the wide right. Dropping back. Looking good protection. All day to throw. Fires over the middle of the field. Caught at the 30 and up to the 35-yard line. Needed 10. Picked up 15. That'll be a first down for the Panthers. And that's something we've seen and we've talked about so far this year, Merle. Pirates go into that three-man defensive front on those third and long situations, and they rely on this cover two-man look. And... If you give the quarterback a little too much time, like we saw right there, these receivers are getting separate uh, separation from these Pirates defenders, and right there, making a catch for first down. 
First down out to the 36-yard line. Pistol formation now. And the handoff, Hughes. Big hole out across the 40. Bounce to the back and tripped up at the 49-yard line. Good open field tackle. I guess that's where that 5.2 comes from per carry, right, right Merle? Being able to just go through the line, accelerate through, and get those extra yards. And he wasn't even touched until he already had the first down. Yeah, Cam Willis Roberson saved, literally saving the touchdown with the ankle tackle all the way out to the 49 yard line. First down for the Panthers. And off. Just nice job this time. First contact was Peyton Ludeman, I believe. Yes, sir, you are right. Peyton Ludeman in there with the big fellas. Yeah. And they're in the trenches, the fifth year senior. You don't typically see that from those uh, corners and those safeties. Peyton Ludeman, he says he wants all the smoke this year in his <laughs> fifth-year senior campaign. He stood him up. Malik McDonald put him down. No gain in the play. Second down and 10 from the 49-yard line. 4.42 to go. First quarter, 7-6 Pirates. One receiver right to the near side. Dropping back. Hit as he throws it. That ball is caught somehow inside the 40 down to the 37-yard line. Great throw by Matt McClary under pressure and a good catch. And that was just a great play to sign right there. You have the tight ends on both sides running underneath crossing routes, and then you run the post up top. It's just it's hard to stop, especially if you're looking into the backfield too much as a defender. And right there, another great third down play by Birmingham Southern to get a first. I think it was Dayton Green on the receiving end. First down and 10 from the 37-yard line of the Pirates. One receiver right, one to the near side. Handoff off right tackle and gets it out to the 35. Maybe a short gain of two yards on the play for Kobe Hughes, but the Pirate defense swarming to the football. Going to bring up a second down and eight. And something so far that we're seeing the Pirates defensive line do really well is they're not allowing this offensive line for Birmingham Southern to get off their blocks and get to the second level. As a defensive lineman, that's your job. You want to stay on your blocks as long as you can to prevent the upfield motion from the offensive line. And so right now that's what you'll get as long as you're playing that well, and the Pirates defense so far doing that. Second down and eight. Handoff off right tackle and tripped up at the, about the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and three. Hughes again on the carry. Pirates swarming to the football. Panthers probably in four-down territory here at the 30 to come up on the three-minute mark. Give a shout out to my mom tuned in from the great state of Illinois, where it's probably not 100 degrees. She's our most loyal listener, Merle. She's always listening in. So we'll always have at least one. <laughs> it's all I need. <laughs> Pistol formation, now they move Hughes to the right side. Hand off Hughes, and he's wrapped up and dropped. Going to bring up a fourth down. Beautiful job coming in backside. That was Alec Gomez. And if you go back and look at that play, Merle, Alec Gomez read that from the start. You have the heavy set to the left. He already knew they were likely going to go that way. He started motioning and shifting with the running back in the backfield, and by the time it was all said and done, he shot through the gap of that guard and tackle, made the play in the backfield. Now looks like Birmingham Southern bringing out the field goal unit. This will be a 47-yarder. Wind at his back from the right hash. His last field goal attempt was blocked. The sophomore van, Ian Vash, and it's blocked again. Picked up on the left side. This can be returned to the 40, to the 45, 50. He's going to go. Oh, my. Oh, got to wait the block in the back. I think that is going to be a touchdown, Southwestern. That's some voodoo right there, Merle. Oh, boy. Voodoo. You hear me say he had the last field goal blocked. What's yeah. going to happen? They're going to block it again. That's what the Southwestern Pirates do, Merle. Touchdown on the defensive unit. Everyone's eating today, Merle. It's homecoming. D.J. James wearing the number 14 on the defensive side of the ball. I'm going to assume that's who that was with the scoop and score. Didn't see who got a hand on it. They've had problems with their field goal. Uh, the senior, Porch Cole, is 0 for 2 in field goal. Vashon has their only field goal, 1 for 1. It was only 26 yards. That one, 47. Have to kick it low, and the Pirates got a hand on it. That left side of that offensive line of the field goal unit is really struggling to maintain and can contain that Pirates defense coming on that their right side. 48 on for the big extra point. Give the Pirates an eight-point lead. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. Right between the uprights. We'll keep it here with 154 to go in the first quarter. So the Pirate offense with a good drive. The special teams have scored. Now we're going to get the defense with a pick six or something like that. 
this is just momentum right here, Merle. That's all that is. When you think about it, they were driving. Birmingham done really well on that last drive. Defense makes a huge third down stop. And then special teams comes in, blocks the field goal, takes it back to the house. Right now, I think the Pirates are just where they want to be. Obviously, we're up eight points, but it's all about just keeping it going, keeping that consistent play that, I'll say it, we haven't seen a lot of this year. Right. At least in the first half. Second half, we've seen that. But it's all about putting two halves together, playing consistent, and making sure that as we continue on in this game, you are the team that ends up coming out on top. Second half, the Pirates are like me when I've overslept when the alarm clock didn't go off. They're frantic, and they almost <laughs> make it on time. So it would be nice if they get into the second half, you know, within, uh, with the lead or at least close. I feel like you get up early, though, Merle. I feel like you're a 6 o'clock alarm clock guy. Not on purpose. <laughs> See? Like, but you go to bed, like, at what, 9? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 9 a.m. <laughs> Fournier to kick it off from the 35-yard line. And this, again, a short, high push kick. Lands on the carpet. That's a live football, and it's still loose. They got it. And the Pirates, I think, got it at the 24-yard line. I believe falling on the football for Southwestern was either, well, it'd be Samuel J. S. Samuel Johnson, number 33. There's just one of them. You know, fool me once, TJ. They had that happen on the last time. You would think they'd be ready for it, but... Uh, Man, they just kind of went to sleep on it. It looked like they were just scared to go catch the ball, like they didn't know what was happening. And Charlie Fournier looking like me with my pitching wedge out there, yeah. sticking a green and rolling the ball back. What a beautiful kick by him, and what an even better job by the kickoff team to go get that ball and realize this is a live ball. You can get it and get it right here for your offense at the 25-yard line. First down and 10 from the 25. Pirates looking to go up by two scores. Sprig, play action. Looking, firing over the center of the field. Got a receiver. Sexton caught. Touchdown. Step over him, young man. Dugan Sexton, the junior, and the Pirates have opened it up a little bit, 20-6 to six with the extra point pending. What a play call there by Coach Mass. You saw him come out and celebrate with the quarterback, Spriggs. That's what you got to do on those kind of plays, Merle. When you make a big play on special teams, two big plays, actually, yeah. you call a play like that to the end zone, play action. They're thinking you're going to run. Nope, we're going to go right over top to you. Throw it to Dugan Sexton out of Wakeland. And he's going to make a big catch. Randy Moss, that opponent. Man, Merle got me excited in the press box. I'm, I'm hype on Vipe. We're bringing that back. Gotta love that. Yeah, a nice catch. It wasn't bad coverage. He no, just went up and got the football. Fournier out of the hold of Damian Gomez. The kick is up. And it's good. So 21 to 6. You know, I'll work in. Melvin's going to laugh. I'm going to work in my, my token Vandergrift uh, uh, plug here. Charlie Fournier, the kicker for Austin Vandergrift. I've seen him do that many times. You are the voice of Vandergrift. Yeah, that, that little wedge kickoff that lands on the carpet and bounces around like the crazy way the football does. And Going to bring in Melvin. Melvin, how are you over there? You know, Merle, uh, still waking up, but hey, we're here. <laughs> we're ready to go. Melvin and I had a big night. We had, uh, had some COVID issues in Houston, so oh, Melvin man. came up from San Antonio, and I drove up from Austin to do a game for St. Pius X with their countdown and kickoff pregame show last night in Houston. Got back, what, around 2 o'clock in the morning? Ooh, I think like I got back around 1.30. I think that's what time I got back. Yeah. By the way, folks, coming up at half, only three top 25 games. We'll tell you about those, as well as conference games playing today in Division Three. You see, I got back at my house at 2 a.m. too, but it was for completely different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Out partying? A lot of Diet Millers consumed. Oh, oh. <laughs> that San Diego State game. And Boise State, that took a long time last night. Was that on? There's another one of those kickoffs. We'll see how they handle it this time. And this time, fair catch call for him made at the 28-yard line. Did they sell that crazy blue field out there, or was that a road game? For it was Boise? a road game. They were playing at San Diego State. Do they? Do you know? I'm sure they do. They do. Michael Rose is saying they do. Yeah. Blue Boise State. Boise State, yeah. yes. They still have the uh, crazy blue turf. Oh. So you're telling me seagulls don't poop in the ocean, Michael? I don't believe you. <laughs> Oh, at least in South <laughs> Texas, the Gulf Coast, no, it's not. You're telling me Mexico, it's not blue? <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. Hand off up the middle and stack up at the 30-yard line. Pirate defense, run defense, doing a great job once again on Kobe Bues while we have a dissertation on ocean colors and <laughs> seagull poop and all that sort of stuff. And this is a big drive right here if you're Birmingham yeah. Southern Merle. Obviously, 
two huge plays for Southwestern. They have the, the momentum. Right now you have to have a long sustaining drive and kind of get some of that momentum back on your side. Play action pass, dropping back, looking. Pocket breaks down, and he spins away. Now rolling back to the near side. Got some running room. Now fires over to the right side. That ball is intercepted. Stayed in bounds to the 45. Coming back the other way and knocked down at the 48. Beautiful job playing center field. That was Cam willis Roberson with the interception. and The Pirate defense firing on all cylinders here. And sometimes as a quarterback, you just try and do a little too much. Right there, we see that from McClary. He gets rushed out of the pocket by Malik McDonald applying that pressure. He's trying to make a play for his team. They're down two scores here. And just like that, throws it to the Southwestern Pirates. And I think you got to credit Malika McDonald Absolutely. by causing yep. that interception because without that pressure he applied, that interception does not happen. So first down 10 Southwestern from their own 48-yard line. Already up 21-6 to six here in this opening quarter, looking for more. To receive a spit out to either side and the empty back set for Sprig. Quarterback draw, design play across the 50. Stays on his feet and pounds it down to the 45-yard line. Gain of seven, second and three. Bob Mask writes in and says, Go Pirates, keep that momentum. Trivia, the first field goal blocked in the modern Pirates era was by number 55, Nick Mask. So he threw the first touchdown and he blocked the first field goal? This dude is a... The, South, the, the, the South legend South grows. Yeah, he's a legend here. Goodness gracious. He was the first player, first senior. Yep, yep. I guess that's what comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you have those opportunities. Right. Second down and three from the 45-yard line. Two receivers left, one of the near side. And Spriggs kept it himself and is going to pay the price. Realized there was just a lot of congestion in the backfield that time, TJ. Decided to hang out of the football and pay the price himself. And right now this Birmingham Southern defense just selling out of the run. They're seeing the, the fake handoffs, but they're still going right after both the quarterback and the running back, and that play will end the first quarter, it seems like. So we have reached the end of the best Pirate quarter of the season, 21-6 to six to score. And uh, where is uh, Chuck Creasy down there? We'll get his. There he is. He can't wear yellow the same day. The, I know. It's kind of blending in down there, Chuck. <laughs> well, an awesome first quarter. Looks like you've got a special guest. Take it away, Chuck Creasy. <laughs> got to get it off mute. Okay. Uh, I'm with Ulam Okan. Uh, he's a senior running back. He's not dressed out today, but he's informed me that he is the hype man for the Southwestern University Pirates. What have you done this week to get the guys ready? You know, I've just been, you know, helping them out, getting in their ears, telling them to get ready. Like, you know, we're going to beat this team. We're going to kill them. Like, we just had a mentality that we're just going to come out here and just be driven and be ready to just destroy this team. Like, we don't care about any past experiences. Like, you know, we come out here ready to kill them. That's what when there's a lot of energy on the sidelines, you know, it helps when the defense and special teams and offense are clicking on all cylinders. Uh, what was the practice like this week that made the difference? You know, everybody been ready. You know, we switched some things around. But like, you know, people that's been brought into the position, I've been ready to get active. That's the thing. People was hungry. People was hungry to, you know. Yeah, it's time plays, to get some wins, you know, right? Exactly. It's time to get some wins. Back to you, Merle. All right, thank you, Chuck. Thank you, sir. Whatever he did, keep doing it. Yeah, I love his hat. Yeah, I do too. Second quarter on the way. Sprig fires over here to the near sideline. That ball is incomplete. A lot of hand checking. Good coverage down the field by number 21 for Birmingham Southern. That's Jet Wilson. And trying to get it intended target. Waiting to get a look at the number. I think it's 83. Yeah, it was number 83. Coleman Robertson. Sophomore out of Mansfield Lake Ridge. That's where my roommate went to high, uh, high school, Merrill. He's here today. Blair Orr. Shout out Blair Orr. He had his own play back in college, the Blair Witch Project. I got to like that. Yeah, it was a little trick play. Got to take advantage of a name like that. Pirates going to go for it on fourth down, apparently, from the 45-yard line. They got the win at their back now as the teams have switched sides. Fourth and three from the 45. Spriggs, pitch out right side, and he's going to have the first down yardage and more inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Gutsy play call near midfield. Pirates not being conservative, T.J. Vela. I think you make those kind of play calls when you believe in your team, when you believe in your players. Right now, the Pirates believe in themselves. Beautiful blocking on that right side on this option play. Spriggs read it perfectly off the defensive end, gave it to the running back, and he was not even touched until he got past the first down marker. 
Pirates up 21-6 after the first quarter. They're on the move again. First down and 10 moving right to left from the Panther 39-yard line. One receiver right trips to the near side. Low snap. Handoff. Now reversing field and splits the tackle. 35 to the 30. Inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Devon Phillips, he was dead to rights for a four-yard loss. He kind of ducked between there like a greased pig. Devon Phillips doing everything in the backfield, dancing around, making people miss. Like you said, I thought he was dead in the water back there. Somehow, some way, got a first down for the Pirates. What a job by Phillips. First down, Southwestern at the 28. But that goes back to what I said. Birmingham Southern selling out on that run now. They're flowing with the Pirates really well now. But Phillips just made some great moves to get that first. The receiver's right to the near side. Spriggs going to keep it himself. And Dragon tackles down to the 25-yard line. Good for a three-yard pickup. Three's not spectacular, but we've talked about it before. You do that four times, you've got a first down. It's funny how math it just works yeah. out like that, right? But right there, if you saw us, number 17 for Birmingham Southern, Nate Lee, he's trying to rip the ball out. The Birmingham defense trying to do anything in their power to get this ball back to their offense because they know another Pirate score, and it's going to get a lot tougher to start mounting a comeback. Right. And their defense has been on the field a long time, and it's hot down there. And they're not oh, – no, they're probably used to it out there in Alabama, right? You would think. Second and seven from the 25-yard line. Spriggs in the shotgun again. Dropping back in the play action. Pocket breaks down. He steps up. Going to scramble forward and get it down to the 22-yard line. Some pretty nifty footwork there by the freshman, Jalen Spriggs. And Spriggs had his guy open over the middle. It was going to be number two for Southwestern, Aiden Huerta. But wisely, instead of taking a sack, instead of throwing it away, just got some yards out of it. Makes this a lot more manageable third and four here. They're down to four from the 22-yard line. They are in 48 range, but they're not thinking three right now. 12.35 to go first half. Southwestern up 21-6. On homecoming weekend, two receivers wide right, two to the near side. Nice counter play, but Birmingham Southern had that one read very well. It's going to be a loss of two back to the 25-yard line. And finally, after what seemed like forever, this Pirates offensive line finally cracked, finally yeah. gave up a negative play in the backfield. So unfortunately for the Pirates, they're having to kick a field goal here, but we'll see. It's your boy, Charlie Fournier. We'll see Four what he can do here. From 42 yards out, wind at his back. From just inside the far hash, out of the hold of Damian Gomez. Good snap and hold. I think we got a motion here. Kick was good from about 60, but I thought I saw a pirate flinch on the right side. Yep, procedure of the call. They'll have to back it up five yards, and he'll try it again. But you can see the leg there with the wind helping. We know he's got it in the bag, at least, for this. Is it just me or those goalposts pinched at the top? It looked like it, right? And Melvin's not and said, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they have to replace the goalposts every morning for Southwestern game to make it the collegiate goal. That's post. true. That's right. Yep. Because it's normally we're playing here at Berkelbach. It's the high school goal post any other day of the week except for Saturday during Southwestern's football season. George on East, you played here last night against Cedar Park. 47 yard in now. Same spot in the field. High snap. Good hold by Gomez. A kick by 48. Does it have enough? Nope. Had enough, but he sliced it left. And that five-yard penalty was costly. The Pirate defense had to come on the field with 11.05 to go, still protecting a 15-point lead. Had the leg, but not the accuracy on that one. That high snap could have messed with his timing there. Yep. You know, kickers are creatures of habit. You saw it in the game with the Dolphins and the Patriots when they timed up that snap perfectly to go block it. Like, it's one of those things. If kickers, holders, they all have these habits, the little quirks. And right there, we saw it. High snap could have messed with Fournier just enough to have him pull that ball to the left. So McClurry leads his offense back out in the field. His Panthers trailing the Pirates 21 to six. Dropping back, looking. Fires underneath, complete to the 40, up to the 45, and up to the 49 yard line. Good pick up there on the stop for the Pirates was Quincy Q. Nevins out of Manville in Houston. And that's another post route on the inside, Merle. Right now, their biggest plays for Birmingham Southern offensively have come on those inside post routes. We'll see here if they 
continue to try and attack that or want to mix it up a little bit. Two receivers left, one here to the near side. Fake the handoff, now the pressure coming. Gomez pursuit, fires over to the left side and incomplete. Good coverage downfield by the Pirates. Boy, Ali Gomez almost had him, flushed him out of the pocket and forced an errant pass, gonna bring up a second down coming up. And Ali Gomez did a really good job of reading that play. He saw the left guard for Birmingham Southern pull, but he didn't go upfield. So that automatically tells a linebacker that's a pass. And so once he saw that, he went straight for the quarterback and tried his best to make a play. And just good job on McClary getting away from it. Second and 10 from the 49-yard line of the Panthers moving left to right. Trips wide left, one to the near side. Handoff, off right tackle, and stacked up the line of scrimmage. Break the tackle, falls forward for an extra yard or two down to the 47. That turns into a four-yard pickup for Kobe Hughes. So it's up a big third down and six for the Pirate defense. A big one indeed. We talked about the momentum earlier, Merle. Does that miss field goal that gives Birmingham Southern the ball here now, third and four at the Southwestern 46-yard line? Does this Could this be a momentum shift for them? Right. So an important play coming up here for the Pirate defense to get off the field. Third down call at a long five from the 46-yard line. Dropping back. Fires over the center, deflected and incomplete. A little bit too much mustard on that one. Trying to get it uh, down the field to Smith Coon, who has scored the Panthers' only touchdown of the ball game on the Wildcat. Fourth down coming up. And that last play, Merle, that's something we've seen from them a lot in this third down situation. It's those two underneath routes and then that one slant route up the inside. Other, the first time they ran it, they threw it to the slant. This time, went to the underneath route, they couldn't catch it. Big play coming up, fourth and five from the 46-yard line, and they're going to pooch punt it. Softly lands at the 21-yard line and rolls out of bounds at about the 15. Pirates will take that with 9.50 to go in the first half. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Southwestern Pirates football on Vipe. Welcome back. Sam LeBlue getting his first touch of the ball game. Takes it off the left side to pick up a yard or two. And boy, TJ talked about the depth of the running back. That's what the fourth, the fifth running back that's touched the football. And the starter, Blaine Corkin, isn't even playing. Or not Blaine Corkin. Uh, uh, Colby Bartlett isn't even playing today. And that's just what's crazy to me. You have so much depth of the running back. And it's so important, I think, in the D3 level when you have games at 1 o'clock in this Texas heat, you have to have that depth at that position to be able to compete at a high level. And Southwestern seems like finally has that depth here. Second down and nine. Play action. Spriggs dropping back. Looking. Firing over the center field. Going forward and incomplete. Almost intercepted. Try to get it down the field for Mitchell Garrett. And you could see the effects of the wind that time, I think. It just kind of sailed on both him and his defender. Yeah, and Mitchell Garrett right there. It looked like he thought the ball was going to be one place, but that wind took it, like yeah. you were saying, because he had slowed up a little bit. And I think if he keeps running, he's going to fall right underneath it, and he's going to be in the end zone here for the Pirates. I think you're exactly right. So now a big third down coming up here for Southwestern. They've got a third down in nine from their own 18-yard line. Clock stop. Well, 9 away to go first half. Southwestern up 21-6. Two receivers right, two to the near side. Spriggs in the shotgun again. Moves Reeves to his left. Pitch out to Reeves. Gets a block on the edge. Cuts back at the 20. Steps out of bounds at the 22. Not quite enough. They actually give him the 24. Pretty good spot, but he's still going to be two or three yards shy, and the Pirates will be forced to punt it away. And that's the risk you take when you run a play to the boundary just like that with the option. You had great blocking. Matt Gomez was out there, number 53. He had a pancake block on that, but... For a 10-yard situation, it's tough to get that when you're talking about the boundary because it gets so congested over there on that side of the field once the defense realizes what you're running. Yeah, just kind of ran out of real estate. So Fournier set to hit this one, hit it from about the 15-yard line, has the wind at his back. A 
Good snap back. Pressure coming. Gann gets rid of it. Good punt. And that's going to be a rough in the punter. Fair catch call for made at the 37-yard line, but it won't matter as Fournier took a shot. Yeah, hopefully he's okay. He's slow he's to get a, up. Yeah, he's a little wobbly. And no matter if it's roughing or running into, it's going to be a first down no matter what with, with it being fourth and four. But that looked like roughing. First and a foul. That'll be the big 15-yarder. Stood in there, took the shot, knew it was coming. What a man. They only make those men at Vandergrift. That's all. right. <laughs> <laughs> so a second chance here for the Pirates. This is a Pirates team that doesn't usually get to operate on second chances. It's That's usually, true. That's usually there. Yeah. us giving them away. Right. <laughs> so this is this feels nice. This is cool. It's magnificent. Let's keep it up. A lot of football left to be played. 8.39 to go first half. Two receivers wide to the right, two to the near side. And off right side to Reeves across the 40, up to the 43-yard line. Give him four yards on the play, second down and six. And a Birmingham Southern defender's helmet comes off, so he has to come off the field. Clock will stop on that. You ever taken your helmet off from the bottom of a pile because you were gassed and you thought that would be a way to get you out of the game? No, but one time my pants fell down. <laughs> <laughs> so it did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. My sister still roasts me about that till this day. She has a video of it, too. It's pretty bad. Second Luckily, my girl stayed on. <laughs> Second and six from the 42-yard line. Some things you can't unsee, and I didn't even see it. Dropping back, Spriggs looking, firing over the right side, and incomplete. There's that wind sailing again, trying to get it down the field to Aiden Huerta. And it sets up a third down and six coming up from the 42-yard line. You know, I got a lot of cheerleaders' numbers that day, actually, bro. Oh, <laughs> they did <didn't> now. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great day for me. <laughs> Maybe not the male fans, but <laughs> I had a great day. So when we're back here two weeks from now, if pirate players start dropping their pants because they've listened to you trying to pick up some dates, you his know, name is TJ Vela. That was back in the day, though. You know, that's a long time ago. You, it doesn't work as much nowadays. <laughs> Third down and six. Spriggs dropping. Firing underneath, complete, uh, and across the 50-yard line, down to the 46-yard line. Nice job there, coming back for the football, the fr uh, junior Mitchell Garrett. Just kind of stayed in motion in his route. And that's someone that the Pirates really need to get going this year. Mitchell Garrett's a yep. guy that last year we were talking a lot about. It seemed like every week he was making a big play. This year so far in his sophomore campaign, is, is off to a slow start. It could be due to some of the quarterback changes and everything, but we really need Mitchell Garrett to get going here this year. First down, 10 Pirates of the Panther, 46-yard line. Play action again. Springs under pressure. Gets a block on the edge. Going to tuck it up at the 45 and knock down at the 43. <coughs> Scramble forward for about a four-yard pickup. Second down and six. And he took a big shot right there, Merle. But luckily, he's a big body, like we said earlier. So he can absorb those shots, but not every time. At that situation, we love the effort. We love you going out to get it. But as a freshman, we need you here four more years. Yeah, we need you yeah. to not have to take those shots all the time. Don't forget the email is open, southwesternfb at gmail.com. Let us know where you tune in the broadcast from. Birmingham Southern fans are welcome aboard as well. That looked a little funny. That will be a five-yard penalty. That looked like, like everybody was on the same snap comp at the center that time. Yep. <laughs> For the Packers, yep. Five yards, second down. The usual all-star crew here, Melvin Jones, will be doing San Antonio Christian football next week. Michael Rose will be back with Austin High. They had a bye week. I do Vandergrift. Melvin, or a TJ, you're going to be helping uh, Chuck Crazy at Leander, I guess, next week. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. So the, if you're a Leander listener, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Shenanigans are coming your way. <laughs> Chuck's laughing down in the field. Second down at 11 after the penalty at the 47-yard line. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Spriggs dropping back, looking, good protection. Has all day, fires over the middle, complete at the 36-yard line, and dives inside the 35 to the 34. Good second effort. I think that was Sexton after the catch. It was a good pitch and catch, but that second effort got him across the line for the first down. And both of Dugan's catches today have been in traffic. He's done a really good job of developing that skill over his three years here at Southwestern, is catching the ball in traffic, and then once you secure it, keep churning your legs because they're likely, the defender's right on top of you. Keep churning your legs, hold on to the ball, 
get the extra yards for your team, just like we saw right there. First down and 10, Pirates at the 34-yard line. One receiver wide right, two to the near side. And Pirates again hurt themselves with penalty. Some deja vu. Yeah, that was a little, little extracurricular activity there. The official quickly coming in to break it up. Ball start, offense, five yards. He was just down. getting a good look at his shoes. <laughs> he is from Alabama. Doesn't Forrest Gump love shoes? <laughs> Oh, some really nice shoes. <laughs> Remember that? I know <laughs> I you've do. seen that movie. I do. <laughs> First down of 15 from the 39. Let's give a shout out to the coach, Les Clary. In the man cave. In the man cave. Well, last night he had six broadcasts up. Only has one to worry about today, and it's just us. I'm sure we're a handful, though. He loves us. Quarterback draw Spriggs, and he slipped. Turf Monster got him when he tried to make the cut. They'll lose a yard on the play. Going to bring up a second down and 16 now from the 40. Clock rolling, 545 to go in this first half. Pirates up. Stick around halftime. Melvin Jones will bring you top 25 scores, also conference scores from the games going on in the SAA, and we'll have homecoming festivities as well. So two receivers to the right, two to the near side. Then get back set for Spriggs, dropping back, looking. Good protection, fires over the middle, complete. There he is again, down to the 30-yard line, makes it a manageable third down. There's Garrett again. He's starting to come alive here in this ballgame, DJ. And that's one of his strengths, too. We talked about Dugan Sexton being able to catch in traffic. Mitchell Garrett, with his big frame and his ability to shake off his, his uh, defenders on top of him on the routes, that's his specialty, too, catching the ball in traffic, going up and getting the balls that seem uncatchable. And that's why I'm saying we need him to get going here in his sophomore campaign early on in the season. 6'3", 195-pounder out of Magnolia High School in Texas. Third down and six from the 30. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Spriggs, pitch out left side, cutting up, 25. First down and more inside the 25, down to the 21-yard line. Devin Phillips is having himself a ball game. Mark Gomez and Matt Gomez, number 64 and 53 respectively, did a great job of just flowing with that ball, flowing with that play, staying on top of their blocks, and giving Phillips the opportunity to get that first down. And obviously, Phillips has done a great job of today in and of himself. But what a play. Another option to the boundary. And I think we saw that earlier. They got the seven yards last time, but it was just a 10-yard play. But that time right there, for third and five, that's a little easier to get. First down 10 for the Pirates now at the Panther 21-yard line. Back split to either side. Play action. Spriggs all day. Swings it out to Phillips. Incomplete. And a flag comes flying in late. That should be an interesting call here. I'm yeah. not sure what the obvious call would be. There was no one near Phillips out there. I, I, I Maybe don't know. a hold? Had to be a hold maybe on the middle of the field. Dugan Sexton, I think if uh, Spriggs had just thrown the ball a little earlier, Sexton would have had an easy touchdown holding catch in the end zone. Him. But, yeah, Number holding. Yeah. Penalty, automatic I was encouraged because Phillips was clapping and pointing yeah. the other way. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It was, there was nothing around him, so it had to be in the center of the field like you were talking about. I don't know if I should be concerned that that ref wasn't looking at Phillips at the time or happy <laughs> that he did make the right call. Nonetheless, first down for the Pirates. Yeah, all's well that ends well. First down, Southwestern at the 11. Two receivers right, one to the near side. Another uh, false start. That's the third one. That it's right there on that left side of the offensive line, too. Well, you mentioned at the start of the, uh, start of the game, kind of a makeshift line oh, a little man. bit with some injuries, and that might be – combined with the changes that we've seen at quarterback throughout the season thus far. Yeah, you work so hard during camp, during those first few weeks of the season, developing not just your knowledge of the plays, your knowledge of the system, but just that consistency of working with other people, of working with your teammates. And when injuries happen, when substitutions happen, you have to get used to new people, used to new quirks and everything like that. And so right now we might be seeing that here with the Pirates and it's cost them three penalties so far here on this drive alone. Yeah, took three points off the board on a, on a field goal earlier. Now it's first down and 15 from the 16-yard line. Spriggs dropping back, looking, stepping up, and he's going to go down back at the 20. Just nowhere to throw the football to. And coming in backside, I believe, number five, that is going to be Ricky Spence, Jr. He's a leading tackler, six tackles per game, seven tackles for loss, and that will be sack number five for him. And I think right there, that's where we see 
a freshman quarterback in those types of situations. He's trying to make something happen for his team. I think an older quarterback right there either scrambles out of the pocket or throws the ball away so right. you don't have to take that sack and lose those crucial five yards, especially here in the red zone. Second down now from the 20. They've got to get it down to the one. Spriggs, quarterback draw. Nice hole up the middle at the 15. Stays on his feet, spins inside the 10 to the 9. I think that official got in his way, and he tried to adjust around him and lost his balance, or he might still be going. I think luckily for that official, Jalen Spriggs did that, because if he <laughs> didn't, right. that yeah. official would have been in the ambulance crying for help. <laughs> it's a big fellow runner right there, quarterback. With a head of steam. Third and eight now from the nine. They can pick up a first down at the one. Three minutes, six seconds left. I don't know, Mark. I kind of like it. If we don't get it here, I like four down territory. Yeah. The receiver split out to either side. Spriggs, option play left. He's going to keep it himself and not going to get there. He's going to get it down to about the seven-yard line. So fourth and six. Coach Austin, he was telling the Calvary on the sideline to hold up. But it looks like timeout by Birmingham, right? Yeah. Yep. No timeout in the field. We'll thank some more of our sponsors. Antioch at Georgetown, Baylor Scott and White Healthcare, Chappelle Realty Group, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Don Hewlett Buick and Chevrolet, Double Dave's Pizza, Eagles Wings Home Improvement Services, First Texas Bank, Gary Brown CPA, Mighty Fine Burgers Fries and Shakes, John F. Lewis CPA, Minuteman Press, Primerica Financial Solutions, Rudy's Barbecue, Schlotsky's at Georgetown, Bricks and Ale at the Sheraton, Stephanie Featherstone with State Farm, Georgetown Shirt Company, HEB, House of Gaines, Ross and Champion CPA, GTX Wealth, Jersey Mike Subs, and the League Kitchen and Tavern. It's so great that that sponsor list just keeps growing every single year. Keep it coming. That keeps us up here. That keeps the kids down there. Well, I shouldn't say that. It keeps us up here because they might not want to donate after That's that. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, careful. All right, so this will be a 25-yarder for Fournier from the left hash. Kind of an odd angle. He'll let the angle through out of the hold of Gomez. Good snap and hold this time. Kick is up. Looks good. And right between the uprights. So 2.45 to go. Pirates extend the lead 24-6. Now we'll take a break and be right back. You're watching Southwestern Pirates football on the Vibe Live Network. <laughs> hey, block number one, block number one. Well, first off, thank you for being here. Crosby's second state championship appearance. How does that sound? Welcome back to Berkelbach Field on the campus of Georgetown High School. Merle Bertrand here along with TJ Vela, Melvin Jones. Michael Rose, Harlan Hudson, and the coach Les Clary back at the Comfy Cozy Vibe Live Studios, better known as the Man Cave. I can't wait till you say live from Southwestern University in a few years, Merle. I, amen. The only question is, what's the field going to be called? As much as I wish it would be the TJ Vela Field, I would not be able to donate that much money to warrant that. It'll probably be the McCombs Field. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> will be. Honest. Kickoff coming by Fournier, and that one sails at the one-yard line, and it's going to take the touchback, first down and 10 at the 20-yard line, as long as it's not the Merle Bertrand Memorial Press Box. <laughs> I don't care. Merle, you're not a day over 40. <laughs> How is it going to be Memorial? In, in metric years. <laughs> in dog years? Yeah. Because <laughs> you a dog. <laughs> 2.45 to go first half, 24 to 6 your score. So for the Pirates here this year, with this team at least, it turns into how do you play with a lead? I was just they, thinking that. They've never had to right. deal with a lead. Is it, so I was wondering, yeah, Merle. Yeah, me too. It looked like he did the fair catch, and he caught it right there at the two, but then he tried to go back into the end zone. And typically, if you do a fair catch within the 20, that's going to be a touchback. Right. But maybe because he tried to, they said he tried to run with it, like they're going to spot it right there. I'm yeah. not too sure, but. 
that's a costly mistake if you're the Birmingham Southern offense. Yeah, he, he just seemed like he wasn't sure what he wanted to do with that football. Yeah. So that kickoff return team, three crucial mistakes today. Yeah. The first kickoff they didn't get that let it go deeper into the, into the red zone. The second one that we got, and now this one. And the Pirates have three timeouts remaining. They can pin their ears back. They've got them uh, down at the two-yard line. So let's see how this uh, plays out here. Officials are still talking it over. I'm not sure that they're convinced that this is the right spot. I'm not sure that the uh, coach Anthony Colucci over there is convinced it's the right spot. Yeah, he's pretty upset right now. First year as a head coach of this Panthers. He's offensive coordinator for six years prior to that. And it looks like Southwestern is going to call their timeout. The first of three, kind of hate to burn one, but I think it's more important with the 24-6 to six lead, make sure that you got the defense that you want. Because mm -hmm. they, they might not have realized it was going to be at the two-yard line either. Yeah, I think Coach Austin on the field, Coach Creasel to our right here in the press box, they must have saw something. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, I don't see them burning that timeout for no reason. Right. They had to have seen something, whether it be with Birmingham Southern coming out in a certain look or wanting them just to be prepared because of Chip Killian right now. He's getting... That Pirates defense hyped up down there. He's their linebackers coach. He, Pirates, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just saying, he's the eyes and ears of Coach Creasel. Yeah. That's basically all it is down there. Pirate defense has given up one play, the first play from scrimmage for Birmingham Southern on a Wildcat. They def defended everybody but the guy who had the ball. Other than that, they have been rock solid. That's really messing up their stat line right now. Right? I, know. <laughs> I know. That was like an 80-yard run. So first and two from the two-yard line for Birmingham Southern. Quarterback is back in the end zone, Matt McCleary. In the pistol is Kobe Hughes. Handoff Hughes looking for running room. Just barely got out across the goal line. He's actually going to lose a yard, second down and 11. Pirates had a golden opportunity to get him in the end zone for a safety. And you had Malik McDonald over on the right side getting a lot of penetration on his offensive lineman. And I thought he was going to have the tackle in the backfield, but... The running back, he was just able to slip away. and They're still going with the shotgun here in the end zone. I like this look right here, Merle. Yep, same formation. Hand off up the middle, and this time it's going to be that safety. Coming in, Alec Gomez. No, check that. Blaine Corkin. Blaine Corkin's a dog, but right now there's a penalty. I'm, it's got to be a sideline interference type of thing on Southwestern. But I think Blaine, that, that safety should stand. Yep. Yeah. Blaine Corkin shot in there so quickly. I don't think Hughes even knew what was happening. Right. What a job by him. I think you interviewed him this week, right? On the uh, Coach two weeks ago. show? Two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Yep. So a great job by him getting in there. Or no, it was this week. Yeah, I was like, I, I, said, I swear I watched the right show this week, Merle. Co coffee's wearing off. <laughs> but a good job. And that's. Going back to what I was saying, I didn't like the shotgun set. I wanted them to get a little more breathing room, maybe a quarterback sneak. But when you have a shotgun set and you have a long developing run like we saw right there, it gives the defense ample amount of time to make a play and get a head start. And Blaine Corkin took it right there. So score now 26-6. to six. And if you're not overly familiar with the rules, It'll be a free kick for Birmingham Southern from the 20-yard line. They can elect to either punt it or kick it. Looks like they're going to elect to kick it into the wind. So Southwestern not only gets the two points, they're going to get the football back with about two minutes to go, two timeouts remaining, and should have it in pretty good field position. Yeah, we need a good return here, and I think hopefully get it around the 40-yard line. Give Spriggs enough time and enough opportunity to go make something happen. Pretty good kick into the win and retreating at the 15-yard line. This is Christian Rees on the return up to the 30. Breaks a tackle to the 35. Still on his feet and dies out to the 36-yard line. So pretty close to where you predicted they would be. First down and 10 Southwestern. 2.06 to go. Two timeouts remaining and the wind at their back. That's kind of like my sports betting. Close but no cigar. Right. I'm usually good for the first few bets, but... That last one always gets me. <laughs> you don't think that's by design, do you? Oh, yeah, 100% by design. <laughs> but just against me, though, no one else. The sports books don't want to see me win. <laughs> a 
What a game thus far for Southwestern, but they know only too well that there's two halves to a football game because they've almost come back twice now when they were trailing big. We've been called a second-half team for the good part of this year. Right now we're being a first-half team. Right. So finish it off strong, but come back next half and keep it going. Trips here to the near side. Spriggs dropping back, looking good protection again. Now fires with the right side complete. They'll win it out of the hands. Had the receiver open. I guess Dugan Sexton was too open that time. He didn't have somebody hanging all over him. Yeah, maybe that's the key for Dugan. No, I think he was just trying to keep his feet in bounds mm -hmm. right there and focus too much a little on that. And that's why we see the drop pass. Second and 10. Stops the clock with 2.01 to go. Two receivers to the right, two to the near side. Spriggs, a 5'9", 210-pounder from All Saints Episcopal. Low snap, picks it off the carpet. Fires over the center of the field. Oh, big hit, separated from the football. That was Coleman Robertson. Paid the price for that one. Sets up a third down and 10. So two big drops right there, Merle. It would have been, if you add those two plays together, that's a first down. Yeah. So, I, know, I mean, obviously that was a big hit on the receiver there on Robertson, but start thinking of those little things that hurt the Pirates in those early weeks, especially last week against Hendricks. A lot of drop passes. Today we hadn't really seen much of that. Hopefully that's just, just an outlier right yeah. now. Third down and 10 from the 36. Quarterback draw right up the middle and not much running room there. Gets to the 38-yard line. Just picks up two. Birmingham Southern was ready for that one. And looks like the Panthers are going to call a timeout with 150 to go. So not the drive that Southwestern wanted there when you had a chance to really drive down and get some serious separation, but get a good punt away, play defense, and take a 22-point lead or 20-point lead into the locker room at halftime. And that's all you can ask for if you're Coach Austin. I don't know if they game plan to be up by 20 in this contest. I think it was going to be a good contest either way. So as we go into the half, I, that's going to be the conversation. Play with this lead. Continue to play your kind of football and don't don't let up. Don't be satisfied. Right. Because at the end of the day, they know it. They've came back on people. They've had people come back on them. No lead is safe, especially in this new conference. Pirates up by 20. Southwestern going on the road next week to take on Rhodes in Tennessee, Rhodes College. And Birmingham Southern returns home to take on Millsaps College. Our next broadcast will be in two weeks from today. And hopefully it won't be 100 degrees, but it will be. It'll be 95. 95, yeah. But Chuck will still be down there repping the yellow. Need to get him a, like a little mobile umbrella. <laughs> Some sunscreen. Fournier set to punt it away. He's standing on his 25. Good snap back. They send four, and he gets a booming punt. SpaceX is that one. Fair catch call for him, made at the 15-yard line. Let's see, 35-45. That was about a 55-yard punt with no return. He said earlier on his first punt, he was only one of ten putting it in the 20-yard line. And I don't think that's anything with Forney. I think that's just because he's kicking so far back. You're usually, exactly right, yeah. And he doesn't have a chance to get it to the 20. So we saw in that first punt, he's able to get it there. Yep. They weren't able to down it where they needed to, but... I mean, Fournier is such a talented kicker, not just with field goals, but with punting too and on kickoffs. He's a real asset for this Pirates team overall. Now he's a junior. So, great so guy right there. 144 to go. Pirate defense with us. 85 yards behind them to keep Birmingham Southern out of pay dirt. Dropping back. Pressure coming. Rolls to his left and steps up. And knocked down at the 17-yard line. Maybe a gain of two or three yards on the play. Before Malik McDonald putting down Matt McCleary. They give him three, second and seven from the 18 yard line. Panthers trying to hurry. They have one timeout remaining. And we haven't called his name a bunch today. Jason Lund, he's been terrorizing that right side of the offensive line. Dropping back, swing it out left side, complete on the dead run and 25 to the 30 up the far sideline, cutting back up to the 40, still on his feet to the 50, look out. To the 30, foot race 20, 15, 10, 5, just what you don't want. Touchdown, Birmingham Southern. Just a swing pass and broken tackles. That did the damage. And it's very similar to that first play that they scored on Merle. They used the aggressiveness of Southwestern against them. They've been keeping the running back in to block. 
all this whole time to keep that Southwestern defensive line at bay. This time, though, they let him go on a swing pass, and there was no one out there to tackle him. And the guys that did, once they got there, weren't able to bring him down. Quick touchdown there for Birmingham Southern. So 26-12 with the extra point pending. Ian Vachon on for the extra point. Kick is up, and it splits the upright. So, instead of having a 20-point lead, it's been trimmed to 13. That's the bad news. The good news is there's still one away to go, so maybe the Pirates can get it down and at least get three points here before halftime to try to recapture some of the momentum, momentum to kind of feel the, the wind coming out of the sails a little bit. You see, you know me, Morrow. I like to think optimistically. I think that's just what the Pirates needed. They needed that wake-up call like, hey, this game's not over. Right. They can score quickly. They need to stay hungry. They need to stay not satisfied because right there, I think we saw it. Birmingham Southern, they can score super quick. If Southwestern doesn't keep their foot on the gas pedal, this game's going to get away from them. Yeah, you can't you can't uh, hide in that shell. You got to keep uh, keep the the pedal to the metal, as the old saying goes. Because that was the first time we saw Southwestern's offense go three and out today. True. So, things to think about. The audience is probably like, we don't want to think. That's y'all's job is to think for us. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see if we can get a good return here and give the offense some field position and some options to work with. In fact, that's going to be called for and made at the O. You got to get on it. That. And He's going to be down to the three-yard line. Yep, it's very similar to what we just saw with right. the Birmingham Southern. Yeah, once you muff that kickoff like that, the fair catch is off the table. If you're going to pick it up, you got to pick it up and try to advance it. So Southwestern now with a mental mistake. They've got the ball first down 10 at their own two-yard line and got to hang on to it here. I think right here, make Birmingham Southern waste their final timeout because you, you, as long as you get it out, you're fine. You can end this half. Right. Just got to get it out and Make them burn that time out and then don't make any mistakes. But certainly not the way the Pirates wanted it in, in this first half. No, very sloppy compared to how they started this game. Those These last two dry – well, this one hasn't started yet, obviously, but from where they're at and where they want to be is obviously not ideal. Pirates almost in a goal line situation just to – Rugby piled it out to the three or four yard line, get a little bit more maneuvering room, keep the clock moving. Birmingham Southern so far not calling the timeout. Southwestern taking their time, untangling themselves. And actually looks like we might have an injury. Yeah, I saw number 79, Trey Flores, running in there. Because that entanglement down there. Looks like Josh Taylor. Yeah. And that's a guy that's already been hurt, Merle. Mm -hmm. He's playing on a torn meniscus. And you get all those big bodies trampling over each other. Stuff can get in the way. And he's been playing like that for two games now. He's tougher than a $2 steak, but still, if you have all those guys, like you're saying, just going right on top of you, it's not ideal for your lower extremities. So it looks like we've got an injury timeout down in the field. It might take a minute or two, so we'll take a quick break. Be right back. You're watching Southwestern Pirates Football on Vibe.
Well, not the sight the Pirates wanted to see as they are helping off Josh Taylor. So that uh, offensive line that's been kind of banged up, TJ, is going to got a, another little chink in the armor. Hopefully he will be okay, but he's not putting any weight at all on the left wheel. Yeah, they're calling for the card right here. This is not good if you're the Pirates. That's someone who's throughout his three years here at Southwestern, he's played every single position. He's basically been a Swiss Army knife for them in terms of the offensive line. And it, it's a big loss. I, you know, Just bringing the card out, everything, not being able to put weight on it, it's got to be that knee, got to be an injury that might keep him off the field for the rest of the year, unfortunately. And uh, Josh was on the show on Monday night as well, if I remember right. Really? I believe so. I want, yeah, I think it was. Hopefully this isn't as bad as it looks, but we'll certainly wish, uh, wish Josh Taylor well. So you look at the offensive line here that's been hurt so far. You have Josh Taylor. In the scrimmage, you had Meech. That's his nickname. I don't know his real name. I just know him by Meech. He hurt his ankle. You have Brian Gutierrez. He hurt his shoulder the first game. And then Anderson Johnson, he suited out, but he's not playing. That's four key guys that were starters for this team right. at the beginning of the year that are now nowhere to be seen. If you're Coach Austin, if you're Coach Ross, the offensive line coach, this is not how you planned this season to go. Probably heard on the PA explain with the offensive uh, injury. Southwestern can either either take a timeout or they can elect not to take the timeout and, and uh, they'll burn 10 seconds off the clock. Thank you. So the clock now down to 37 seconds. Pirates have the ball, second down and nine from their own four yard line. That play did pick up two yard, or pick up a yard or so to get them away from the end zone a little bit. Looks like they're just gonna do it again here. At that point, I might as well just kneel it. Yeah. Don't want anything else to happen. As a former offensive lineman, I know that was always the one play I was always the most hesitant about because mm. I knew what could happen if people rolled up on you. And to push the pile forward again to clear out another yard. We'll see if Birmingham Southern calls a timeout. They're not going to. If they're not going to call a timeout, yeah, that'll be the end of the first half. So a quick start for the Pirates. A late breakdown and a mental miscue. And Southwestern will take a 13-point lead into the halftime break here. Coach Austin is making his way over to Chuck Racy, so we'll get the coach's thoughts here. All right, they are ready to go. Take it away, Chuck. All right, Coach. Uh, pretty good first half. You know, there's still some things on the field that, that you want to probably work on. You're winning the turnover battle. Give us your early thoughts of the first half. Well, winning the turnover battle is a big is a big deal. We're playing better uh, pass defense, which which is good. The the two touchdowns we gave up were complete assignment breakdown. So, you know, we're doing well in defense except for play. So it's kind of one step forward, one step back. So we'll get that cleaned up. Offensively, I think we can move the ball. Um, you know, it's, it's hot out here. We're the ball the whole time. So we try to wear down the defensive line, but I feel like our offensive line is a little worn out too. So it's going to be it's going to be a battle in the second half. We'll see us more energy. Well, and, uh, how do you keep that energy up? And, and you know, you've seen a couple of uh, offensive linemen go down today. How's the depth on that front? Well, we're, we're missing like four starters in the beginning of the season. So uh, it, we, we don't have any depth at that position. They just got to get it out. All right. Hi, Coach. And there you go, Merle. Just as uh, TJ said, you know, missing four starters off of what was the original starting offensive line. But despite that, I think a pretty good overall performance from that offensive front. Some of the young guys getting uh, some good experience here. That, uh, oh, you kind of cut out there, but uh, you still got me. There, there you go. There you are. You're back now. Yeah, I was. I was saying that uh, that's good experience for those younger guys. Uh, but they're going to have to stay out there. You know, Coach mentioned it. The defenses of uh, Alabama, uh, Birmingham Southern is is tired. 
uh, but he mentioned it. So is the offensive line, and there's no depth. So those guys are going to have to uh, uh, tough it out. Well, thank you for that, and hopefully you can get some shade. It looks like you're about to join the cheerleaders, so you might want to be careful. You're about to get run over down there, it looks like. Yeah, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chuck. Yeah, I mean, you're up 26 to 13, TJ. You can afford to grind it out and that kind of thing, but you got to take care of the football and keep that momentum and keep the offense on the field. Keep it, you know, it's hot for the offense too, but yeah. somehow it doesn't affect you guys as much as it does the defense. I guess because you're on the attacking end. Yeah, usually because we are on the attacking end, we're the ones not having to run as much, I guess, too, if you think about pass setting versus rushing um, on a lineman. It's a lot different, but no, it is hot for everyone down there, and it's just at the end of the day, who's going to tough it out more, who's more conditioned, and who's more willing to go get the win? So 26-13, to 13, your halftime score. We're going to uh, take a break, send it over to Melvin, and uh, he'll bring you the halftime festivities here on Homecoming Weekend. This is Southwestern Pirates Football on Vibe Live. Take it away, Melvin. Merle, TJ, Chuck, fantastic first half for the Pirates. Best first half of the season for the team in black and gold as we welcome you to the halftime report. Just a couple of scores to report, especially in the top 25. Only three going on here as in Ann Arbor. Number two, Michigan, and the return of Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh returns from his three-game suspension. Not a problem. 31-7 to seven over the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Down in Death Valley. ACC action, and it is a tight one. Florida State and Clemson are tied at 24. Looks like that game could be going into overtime. Florida State is driving at the Clemson. 39. The Cincinnati Bearcats, their very first game as a member of the Big 12, their first conference game, they're taking on the Sooners of Oklahoma in their very last first game as a member of the Big 12 conference. And the Sooners flexing on the Bearcats. 20 to 6, that game is now a final. So Oklahoma remains undefeated, number 16 in the nation scores in the s double a right now barry the pirates opponents in two weeks our leading center 48 14 that game is in the fourth quarter just kinking off hendrix and Millsaps, and at six o'clock right down 281 in san antonio roads taking on trinity score here at the half Pirates lead 26 to 13, their very best half of this young season. When we come back, we'll send it over to homecoming festivities here at Berkelbach. 26 13, Pirates with the lead. You're watching Pirates Football on Vibe Live.
Welcome you back to Berkebach Field. 26 to 13, Pirates up in the end of the first half. Second half about ready to get it away. Quick look at some of the stats. Southwestern actually has fewer yardage than Birmingham Southern. Uh, 245 to 214, TJ. That's mainly because those two big plays. That's the difference right there. Yeah, that's very deceiving numbers right there. Like you said, it's those two big plays from Birmingham Southern. Outside of that, Southwestern has played really well offensively and for the second half i'm hoping to see a lot more of that yeah let's hope so uh, pirates with no turnovers that's the other key to the game so far hopefully they can keep that up uh, jalen springs in the first half six out of 14 for 91 yards and a couple of touchdowns a running back by committee uh, Spriggs leading them in running with uh, 15 carries for 50 yards. Uh, Devon, Devin Phillips with 44 yards. Christian Reeves with 15 as a team. They've got 94, 104, 109, 122, about 125 yards. Uh, receiving yardage, it's uh, Dugan Sexton leading the way with two catches for 38 yards and a touchdown for the Pirates. And uh, spreading the ball around, five different receivers have caught the football, and hopefully the Pirates can play from ahead, something they haven't had a chance to do all season long. Yeah, and the key to playing ahead here is to do exactly what you just said. Utilize all of your resources. Utilize all the running backs you have. Utilize all the receivers you have. And, hey, if Jalen Spriggs starts getting into a bind, Damian Gobas can go right mm -hmm. in there. We can utilize him as a resource. Right now, I think that's exactly what Coach Austin told him at halftime. You haven't had to play with the lead so far. It's going to be something new to you. But we have to keep our pedal to the metal. We have to put this game away. We have a 13-point lead. And we have 30 minutes to keep our lead and to put this game away. Yeah, 13-point lead. They're going to get the football first to start the second half. So this defensive uh, defensive unit on the field for the first time in the second half is going to be very important. Yeah, we talked about it, TJ, how important it was for this game. Uh, both teams coming in here 0-1. Neither one wants to go 0-2 as we take a look uh, at the district, at the district standings, the high school comes in and play again. <laughs> the UIL. The, the, yeah, the conference standings, we'll see where everybody's at right now. Both these teams at the bottom of the pile looking to move up and even up the conference mark at 1-1 one and one, uh, heading into the final six games of the season. So Fournier with the football on the teeth, the 35-yard line to kick it off. This one might land on the roof of the field house. Line drive kick, and it lands on the A of Patriots in the end zone. So here we go. The wind is still blowing pretty hard from right to left, so Birmingham Southern will have the football first going from left to right into the teeth of that wind. Don't forget the email is open still, southwesternfb at gmail.com. Give a shout-out to your favorite player on either side. Happy to have you with us here on this Saturday afternoon. And as Southwestern trots back out here on defense, Merle, to go back to what Coach Austin said before the half ended, it's all about taking care of your assignments. Mm -hmm. The blown assignments is what led to those two big touchdowns for Birmingham Southern. So right now I know Coach Chip Killian, Coach uh, Creasel, that's what they're preaching at halftime. That's what they expect to see here in the second half. Dropping back to pass, being flushed out of the pocket, looking left, firing over the left side, complete on the sideline. Did he make the catch? He did at the 30-yard line. Nice job there by Matt McClary, keeping himself alive, picking up five yards on the play, second down at about five. And that's something we haven't seen from McClary so far is him being able to be flushed out of the pocket and make something happen. So that might be a halftime adjustment for them on offense, letting them uh, there know that the receivers need to stay open, they need to keep moving their feet and come back to the ball like we just saw right there. Second down and a short five from just across the 30-yard line, just underway second half. McClary handoff, Hughes, and the running defense stacking him up. About two yards shy of the first down. Going to bring up a third down and two here. Kobe Hughes on the carry. Host of Pirates involved on the stop. And Alec Gomez, he won't be accredited with the tackle, but he went in and blew up the pulling guard right there and really allowed his secondary to come in and make that tackle for a short gain. Big play here early in the second half. Third down and two coming up for the Panthers from their own 33-yard line. Moving from left to right. One receiver left, one to the near side. Hand off right side, and maybe got across the line. Going to depend on the spot. Looked like he was kind of juggling the football as he got the, the uh, yard to get, and he got the first down. Yeah, it looked like he was juggling it, but I think he was actually reaching it out, and I thought he right. was going to be short, but that extra reach out by him, the running back, worked out for in his favor, and that's a first down for the Panthers. So Birmingham Southern keeps the drive alive. First down, 10 to the 35-yard line, just underway second half. McClary, pitch out left side. 
and knocked out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. I believe that was Blaine Corkin there who scored him out of bounds after about a four-yard pickup, second down and six from the 39. And there's going to be a lot of Southwestern fans are going to, that are going to say that looked familiar because that was a pitch out to the boundary. The difference with us is that we're actually running an option. That was a strict pitch. Right. That was going to go to the running back no matter what. On ours, the quarterback has the option to keep it, obviously. Two receivers left, one of the near side. Pistol formation dropping back. Pass over to the left side and incomplete. Overshot his intended target. And it's probably a good thing he did because if he doesn't, I think Jamarcus Ross might have a pick six. I think so, too. And it looked like there was some miscommunication with the wide receiver on that one. It looked like he wasn't expecting the ball to go to him either. So, nonetheless, good defense. And now a third and six situation here for the Panthers. 13-20 to go third quarter. Third down to six from the 39-yard line. Chance for the Pirate defense to get off the field. Trips to the near side. One receiver wide left. McClary in the shotgun. McClary dropping back. Pirates bring the blitz pass. Complete over the middle of the field to the 50. That's going to be good for the first down. Breaks one tackle. Stays on his feet and knocked down at the Pirate 43-yard line. Once again, Birmingham Southern picks up the first down on a third and long. Nice job there picking up that blitz. And that's another blown assignment for the Pirates. That was the running back number four, Mitch Thompson, out the backfield. When you bring a lot of pressure with like the Pirates love to do, you have to make sure you stay on your assignment. So the linebacker is usually assigned to the running back coming out of the backfield. And right there, it looked like the running back did a good job faking the block and then getting out wide open for the pass. So first down, 10 Panthers. Hand off right side, trying to go to the corner turn and gets it inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Hughes on the carry. Picking up four yards, second down to six. As Birmingham Southern put together a nice drive. Yeah, so far, this has been their best drive of the game. Obviously, like we said earlier, they scored on two big plays, two blown assignments for the Pirates. So putting together a nice drive here, kind of similar to how Southwestern started the game in the first quarter. One receiver left, one of the near side. Pistol formation again. McClary, bootleg to his left, being pursued over to the left side, looking, firing over to the left side, complete, yeah, incomplete. Pirates caught a break. They had him open for a first down, a little bit high on the pass. And it's going to set up a third down and six, another chance on a third down play. But, boy, we got away with one there. Yeah, I'd even argue that the Panthers caught a break right there because if our corner, Xander Reed, would have looked up a little late, a little sooner, yeah. he may have had a pick on the tip bald right there. Third down and six from the 38. Panthers probably in four down territory here. One receiver left two to the near side. McClary, straight drop, looking over the center. Deflected and incomplete. Beautiful job there on the coverage. That'll set up a fourth down, trying to see who that is. Looks like 39, which would be Q Nevins. Yeah, Evans had great coverage there. Blaine Corkin, the middle linebacker, had great zone coverage yep. as well. He put his hand up. It was a, such a tight window to get that ball in, and it was there, but just great defense by the Pirates to get that ball out. Need one more play here. Fourth down and six from the 38. Southern going to go for it. Trips to the near side on the short side of the field. Now he's dropping back and going to pooch punt it. So that might be Fielded a trouble, at the 15 yeah. yard line up to the 20 and spins free. And a hard hit across the 22 yard line on the return for the Pirates was Colin Peterson. Now that was probably Peyton Ludeman, number 11. Yeah, that was Peyton Ludeman. So the Pirate defense bends a little bit, but they don't break. You're, you know, you heard me say earlier, it looked like the Southwestern drive in the first quarter. That was only me trying to voodoo their offense, <laughs> trying to jinx them a little bit. And I'm not going to say it worked, but here comes the Southwestern offense trotting onto the field, Merle. I'll say it worked. I'm glad someone agrees with me for once, Merle. <laughs> Wind at their back, first down 10 at the 22-yard line. Offense stalled a little bit late in the first half. Let's see what adjustments they make. Spriggs, handoff, right side. Out across the 25, shed and tackler spins out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Devin Phillips continues to run hard, picked up about six yards on the play, second and four. Yeah, I'm liking Devin Phillips right now, Same. bro. And I just saw right here, he's a freshman out of Rockport, Texas, from Rockport Fulton High School. That's the 361. That's where I'm from. That's bro. your neck of the woods, yeah. Hey, he got me. I like him even more now. Shout out the 361. Shout out Rockport. Shout out to Odom, Texas. 
Second down to six in the 28 yard line. Zone read, Spriggs rolling to his right, firing over the right side and incomplete. Gonna set up a third down and six at the 28 yard line. Yeah, but the key with these play action passes that the Pirates are running is the offensive line selling the run. Right now, they're not being very aggressive. They're not selling the run enough, and it's giving the Birmingham defense just enough time to get up the field for one on the defensive line and then the wherewithal to stay with their assignments in the secondary, and that's why we're not seeing as many completed passes as from the first quarter. Third down and four from the 28-yard line. Spriggs to his left, pitch out left side. Phillips trying to race to the corner, stiff arm, does it to the 35 and out of bounds to the 38-yard line. That was just speed there. They had it strung out pretty well. He found that extra gear and got around the corner. You know, I'm just going to keep saying it's because it's from the 3-6-1. He's able that's to right, do that. That's what girl. it is. But no, yeah. great job by Phillips right there, getting to the outside. You saw the stiff arm. Just a great job following the blocks all the way around. Going back to your point a moment ago, those are the little things that your starters do that maybe the guys yep. in reserve don't do. Yep. Talking about selling the run and that kind of thing. And it's like what Chuck was saying. He was asking Coach Austin at the end of the half, this offensive line that is not as deep anymore, they have to start doing that. They have to start doing those little things. Yeah, this time, Phillips, not much running room. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like he lost a yard, second down at 11. Good penetration that time by the Panther defense. Clock continues to roll, 10.45 to go third quarter. Like, we just look at the two, man. You see a lot of the... The, the backups are the ones that are playing right now. We right. see Trey Flores out there. We see Mark Gomez. So it is an offensive line that has been beaten. But I think these guys that have been in, they've done a good job of stepping in and still playing at a high level. It's just keeping that intensity going throughout the year. Sprague's dropping back. Pass swung out here to the near side. Oh, Phillips started a run before he had the football. He heard the footsteps of the defender coming in behind him. On the coverage. 29, that is Ty Armstrong, the linebacker. And third down and 11 coming up. Yeah, that wouldn't have been a big gain for the Pirates, but it would have been just enough to get them a little closer to that first right. down, obviously. And it would have kept the clock going because, as we know, 13-point lead, we also want to get this clock going and get out of this game as quick as we can. So third down and long coming up from the 36-yard line. Spriggs dropping back over, draw play, gets a block. Good yard is there to the 45, <laughs> and it's got the first, very near the first down marker. The official on the near side is going to say yes, first down. I like him. Coach Austin might be in his ear. Oh, he's pointing. They're not giving it to him right now. Yeah, the, the line judge on the near side is saying that's a first down. What we got going on here? Referees might have a throw down. Waiting for the chains to move on the far side. That was Phillips on the carry. They're going to talk it over because the official on the far side says no. The official on the near side says yes. There it is. There it is. All right. I think Coach Austin would have been a little upset <laughs> had we <laughs> yeah. not gotten that first one. Coach Ross may have gotten another unsportsmanlike penalty call. Who knows? <laughs> So Devin Phillips, Devin Phillips with the 11-yard draw play picks up the first down at the 47-yard line. Two receivers wide right, two to the near side. Spriggs, low snap. He's going to keep it himself across the 50 and falls forward to the 47. That'll be a six-yard pickup, second down and four. And now the Pirates are starting to remember what got him here in the first place. Yep, they're starting to rely on that running game. And I think it's that trust now in this new offensive line. At first, I want to say that they just didn't trust these guys at first because they obviously just don't have that game experience. Right. But – here at the end of the half, we saw a lot of good things, and now here in the second half, we're seeing a lot of good things that is beginning to get that trust in them and want to go back to those original play calls. Second and four from the 47. Phillips again, off right tackle. Big hole this time inside the 40. Breaks the tackle, 35 to the 30. And digging for the football, the Panthers are not going to get it out of there, all the way out of the 28-yard line. A 15-yard pickup for Devin Phillips. And the Pirates are on the move. And we've been talking about this Pirates run game, right? They've been doing a lot of their dirty work with the draw. That time, a counter to the right side led by Matt Gomez picking up a great block on that linebacker. And Devin Phillips didn't even get touched until he got past the 10-yard mark. Just a great job overall so far this by this Pirates offense. And now they're at the 27-yard line. And fresh legs comes in. Christian Reeves, the sophomore. In the game, lined up to the right side. He is going to get the nope, – oh, whistles blow. What do we got? This might be the fourth illegal procedure penalty. This is the one area the Pirates have really struggled with today. But 
But they haven't moved the football yet. I'm wondering if maybe the chains weren't quite set. Either that or they didn't allow the defense to get set in time. Oh, that could be too. Because I know I saw a sub running in. So no penalty. First down and 10. Yeah, snapping the ball yep. prior to ready. Shame on them. They're just trying to move fast. They're like Ricky Bobby. They just want to go fast. <laughs> First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Reeves with the carry. Puts his head down and pounds it down to about the 25-yard line. Gain of two yards on the play for the sophomore. Second down and eight. Already in 48 range. But again, Southwestern looking to get seven. Looking to boost this lead back up as this game wears on. Yeah, you'll you'll be okay with three, but you want to put one in the end zone here. They've been in this situation for the this is the third time in a row. Yeah. They got the missed field goal in the first. They made the second. They want to put one in the end zone here. Second down and eight. Spriggs going to keep it himself. Nice little bounce to the outside. He's going to go to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Oh, a pinned it down to the two-yard line. And a flag comes flying in late. And I think they're going to get Robertson on a block in the back, but you can't call that block in the back. He made a great tackle on the quarterback, and now Spriggs getting up hurt. He's limping. Oh, he got hit. Looked like almost right on the knee. And this is not what you want to see if you're a Pirates fan. Nope. Illegal block in the back, number 83. Mm. The Ten yard penalty, first down. So it is a first down but it's going to be pushed back from that spot. It's going to be back at about the 14-yard line. Right now, the big concern is the condition of Jalen Spriggs, the freshman quarterback. See, I don't know how you can make a call like that. Like, you're, you yeah. think he blocked the guy right into this guy, into our guy's knee? Like, I, I understand making the right call, but at that point, you have to look at the, the grand scheme of things. You have to look at the whole play. So Damian Gomez will have to come in for at least one play here. There's not a big drop off for Damian Gomez. He started the season as a starter. He can move the ball too. Six foot, 195 pound senior out of McAllen. He's walking under his own power, but looks a little gimpy on that left side though. Hopefully he just got hit in the quad, yeah. hit in the shin or something. Because obviously his big game is the run game. And that's what makes him so deadly is being a dual threat quarterback like that. So Gomez will come in. Pirate ball, first down and 10 at the Panther 12. And Gomez is coming in cold. He yeah. didn't get any warm-up throws any or anything over there. He's a good running quarterback too. So, And there you go. You're going to see him tuck it under inside the 10 all the way down to the six-yard line. And that's going to bring up a second down at about five. And for Gomez, who was benched here for this game for Spriggs, I think that's a little bit of motivation. I agree. You want to be, you know, want to prove that you can play on this field and be the starter again. These are those situations where you have to put one in the end zone. And now we've got another timeout on the field. Looks like a injured player for the Panthers. We'll take a break. Temperature is heating up. The game is heating up. Southwestern Pirates football on Vibe. Seven seventeen to go third quarter. Pirates up 26-13, driving injured Panther player down to the field. I'll try to get a look at his number when I can. In the meantime, Melvin's got some scoring updates for you, sir. Merle, Oregon has just scored 7 nothing over Colorado. Also a final score in Death Valley. Florida State 31-24 over Clemson in overtime. Fellas. Injured player, Marquise Davis, a six-foot, 290-pound freshman out of Birmingham, Huffman High School. He's walking off the field. We're about to find out if Colorado is what they're cracked up to be, I hey, think, this week. They for sure are, Merle. Stop hating over there. 
<laughs> I'm just saying. Coach Prime said, we coming, we're here. <laughs> Second and four from the six. Two receivers wide right, two to the near side. Gomez stays in at quarterback. Got Reese to his left. Counter play to Reese, and he's tripped up in the backfield. Falls to the five-yard line. Penetration there. And it's going to bring up a key third down and five. And this Panther defense is playing like they smell blood in the water right now. You have that injury to Spriggs. They're playing a little more passionately right now. Yeah. Because the Pirates offense had them on their heels this whole drive. Third down and four coming up. You can pick up a first down at the two. Gomez, two receivers wide to the right, one to the near side. He's in the shotgun. And Gomez straight ahead running, following his blockers, digging towards the first down marker. He's not going to get there. He's going to be about a yard shy, yard and a half shy. Going to bring up a fourth down, and looks like no hesitation. Pirates are going to try to take some points here as they send Charlie Fournier out on the field. You almost wish that you would have moved, ran the ball to the right a little bit to center up this field goal. True. So basically an extra point here for Fournier, except for the angle on the left side. Gomez stays on as the holder. Good snap and hold kick is up. Fournier chip shots it through. And with 5.46 to go third quarter, Pirates extend their lead 29 to 13. That's the good news. But if you do the math, it's still a two-possession game right now. It's a true two-possession game, I guess you'd have to say, because it's 16 points. You have to score two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Math wasn't my specialty, but I could do that. <laughs> you got enough fingers and toes to, yeah. to, to figure out 16? Just enough. I think I have 20. <laughs> I think. I'm not Coach Prime. <laughs> I don't have t uh, toes missing. <laughs> yeah, I can see him still working on Jalen Spriggs down there in the sidelines. So I'm hoping that they're, they're taping him up and getting him ready to go back out there. But again, you're, you know, that's sort of one in one A. They have basically platooned so far in the first three games. Domez came in 30 out of 61, 393 yards, two touchdowns, but four interceptions. He had the three rushing touchdowns, so a good running quarterback as well. You're not losing much, if oh, anything, no. if you got to switch out to Gomez. But not at all. They just had a rhythm going, yeah. and that's what you lose. Like kind of what we we're talking about the offensive line. It's that consistency that right. you're used to playing uh, ball with all these guys. But like we saw last year, and like we saw earlier in the year, Damian Gomez can do this easily. Like he, this is his specialty, coming in and leading a team to victory, and hopefully we see that here today. Forty eight will kick it from the thirty-five yard line, and this one is returnable. Two of the two, they're going to bring it up to the 5 to the 10 to the 15. Up the far sideline of the 20, look out, 25 to the 30, cutting it back up and knocked down at the 34-yard line. That was Smith Kuhn, who I believe had this touchdown on the uh, Wildcat play to start the ball game. Stats are still crediting it to uh, Matt McClary. I'll have to go back and watch the replay, but I'm pretty sure that was Kuhn. But a good return nonetheless, and he's got his team in business out at the 34-yard line. I want to say that's our first return of the game outside of the one after the safety. I think you're right. right? Yeah. Yeah. They've been kicking it in the end zone so far today. Forty is slacking off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the wind died down. Who knows? Pistol formation for McClary and company going from left to right into the teeth of the wind. McClary dropping back. Pocket breaking down. Stepping up. Fighting over the left side. Got a receiver again across the 50. And out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a 21-yard pickup. Good for a Panther first down. Birmingham Southern trying to go quickly. That ball hauled in by Dayton Green. And it's that secondary, Merle, that we've talked about so far. They've done a good job not allowing any big plays over top, but they've given up those underneath routes yeah. because of that. Hand off up the middle. Run defense remains stout, but a good rugby push out to about the 30, called the 38-yard line. It turned into a four-yard pickup, second down and six. And if you're the Southwestern defense, yes, they've done a great job all day, but you know they're tired. They've been out there. They just yep. had that long drive before. Their hands are on their hips. Trips here to the near side. Second down and six from the 42. McClary in the shotgun. 
Dropping back. Pirates rushing three. Pocket breaks down. There's a hold. Holding coming back. And pass thrown over here to the near side. And incomplete out of bounds. But it will be a hold. I think it was, was it Jalen Levine or was it Malik McDowell coming from the far side? Almost got in there. It almost looked like all four of them were being yeah. held at that point. I mean, all game. They've just been getting held, I felt like. Think about it. We haven't seen a sack yet. You read my mind. I was just going to say Southwestern's that. Southwestern's defense, in every game, it seems like they're always in the backfield, always making, causing havoc and getting right. sacks. Today, we haven't seen that. I think it's because they've just been getting held every single play. <laughs> And their passing game is different than the others w that we've seen, which is sort of that more western side, get rid of the ball quick. These guys yeah. are drop back passes where you would yeah. think the Pirates would get the pressure on them. Holding was a call there, so second down and 16 back at the 48-yard line. Dropping back again to pass. Pass over the center of the field, a sliding in and out of the cans of the intended target. Try to get it down to A.J. McLemore, the leading receiver, the sophomore. But the pass on a little low and a golden opportunity to get off the field here in a third and long. And I want to say that was the first ball that Macklemore seen all it day. It is, yep. So maybe he just wasn't prepared mentally to get that ball, but that was a good throw there by the quarterback. Averaging 13.8 yards per catch with a touchdown, but unable to come up with that one. Third and 16 from the Panther 48-yard line. And here's where that secondary comes into play, Merle. It's yes. a big third and long. You know they're going to go for the sticks here. Trips wide left. McClary, Pirates showing pressure over the center of the field and incomplete. Beautiful job, timed it perfectly on the coverage for the Pirates. That was Micah Justice, the linebacker, the veteran. Timed the hit perfectly, stayed with it all the way to the ground and forced that football away, TJ. Yeah, great job. And like we said, it was that secondary, and it looked like they were going to make that catch. But like you said, just a perfectly timed hit by Micah Justice, knocking the ball out because I think fourth and one, Birmingham Southern might go for that. They're going to go for it, yeah. But here now they have to punt, and hopefully we can get a good return here. Back to receive the kick for the Pirates, Adrian Garza. Fair catch call for and made over the shoulder at the 14-yard line. Do I see a flag down there at the 10, or is I, that just I debris? Do, I do see two flags right there at the 10 and right there at the goal line. Yeah. Too many men on the field for Southwestern. They're talking to the Panther uh, coaching staff. That would be the only thing I could think of because that's usually their job right. as the back judge to count how many is on the defensive side. But if you're Southwestern, how do you make that type of mistake? In game four. Yeah. Illegal substitution, 12 men in formation on the return team. Penalty is declined, first down. That, so you were right. Doesn't matter, but you were right. I guess, I, I don't know, as a coach, I might want to take that. Uh, the yeah. 10. Obviously, uh, you don't know what could happen on the next play. And there you are pinning them. You're still forcing them out of their own 15. I guess those are the figures. They got them inside the 20-yard line, so. Like, what could be better than this, right? Well, Jalen Springs coming back in the ball game. So, Springs back in. Got him duct tape back together. First down on 10. 14 to go third quarter, Pirates up by 16. Trying to build on it here with the wind at their back. A lot of field in front of them. Two receivers to the near side, Spriggs. Handoff across the 20, and Dragon tackles out to the 23-yard line. Devin Phillips has emerged here today. The freshman out of Rockport, your new favorite player, I'm guessing. I'm going to have to go get his autograph after this one, Merle. <laughs> but if you heard me earlier on the last Southwestern drive, the defense for the Panthers smelling blood in the water. On that handoff right there, the defensive end for the Panthers went and knocked Spriggs down to the ground, and he was slow to get up. So they're going to be attacking him, I think, yeah. for the rest of this game here. Eight-yard pickup for Phillips. Second down or two from the 23-yard line. Pirates working the clock. Handoff up the middle and tripped up across the 25-yard line. Going to be very near the first down marker. I think he's about a foot shy. West Phillips sets up a third down and a short yard. You ever been to Rockport, Merle? No. You got to go. There's Oyster Fest out in the, the summertime. Man, you can't beat it. I was going to say, that is on the coast, right? It I remember is, that it's much. It's out there on the Georgia. Georgia Strait has a little beach yeah. house out there. 
Dak Gwynn, the famous Cowboys linebacker. Uh-huh. He's from Rockport. That's right. Hey, you can't beat the uh, three six one, Merle. Let me tell you. Third down and one. And got just enough to get the first down out to the 26 yard line. Needed one, got two. Phillips with the carry. We used to do this thing where we would showcase schools from around the from around the state. And Rockport Fulton was one of the ones they went to. They had a during one of the scrimmages. They had a big uh, uh, charity event going out at the same time. Really? So. Well, they were one of the schools that got really hit hard by Harvey. I think that's what it was. This was quite a few years ago, yeah. I know <coughs> for a lot of people, so I'm from Odom, Texas. That's near Sinton, Texas. Rockport, their high school had to go to Sinton for a little bit because of Harvey. That's so right, yep. It was a crazy little time back then. Hand off up the middle, and boy, right now the Panther defense just selling out on the run. Stacking up Phillips for no gain. Of the actually, was it Phillips? No, that was a sample blue on the carry. No gain will play second and ten. Pirates are going to have to put it up in the air here. Yeah, well, when you think about it, Spriggs is basically taken out of the game as a runner. Yeah. And if it's his right leg, that's his back foot. That's the foot he has to throw off that's to true. get power into it. So if you're going to sell out on anything, sell it on De- Devin Phillips running the ball up the middle here. Second down and ten from the 26-yard line. Inside of two minutes to go third quarter. Play action, dropping back. Off the back foot, got a receiver out of the backfield to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, and knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. That was Samuel Johnson, the freshman, on the wheel route, and the Pirates with a huge first down play. I swear he's got the broadcast in his helmet, Merle. He just <laughs> heard me say, oh, it's his back leg. He can't throw off his back leg. Right there, Spriggs throwing right off his back foot and placing another perfect pass to the running back for another big game for the Pirates. I love it. Not only off his back foot, he was fading back as he threw it. He looked like Dirk Davinsky uh, back in the day. You know how he used to have that yeah. fadeaway? Yeah. But we saw the Spriggs version in football. So the Pirates flip the field. First down and 10 at the Panther, the 35-yard line moving from right to left. 115 to go third quarter. Spriggs, hand off the blue. Right up the middle, inside the 30. Big collision, stays on his feet, and almost broke another one down to the 24-yard line. 11-yard pickup for the blue, six of it after contact. Sam LeBlue. Running like a crazy man right there. He got hit right up the middle and which is carrying Panthers defenders with him for another big first down for the Pirates. This running back room for the for the Pirates, Merle. It's deep. Probably wish I could spread that amount out amongst the offensive line, but they're getting it done. First down, 10 to the 24 yard line. Hand off up the middle again. Now bounces to the left side, LeBlue. Puts the shoulder down and knocks its way down to the 21-yard line. A hard-earned three yards there for Sam LeBlue. The sophomore out of Sugar Land, Fort Bend Christian Academy. My wife's favorite town, just because of the name Sugar Land. I got to convince her that sugar's not a food group. <laughs> she might love Agua Dulce then. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Another small town in South Texas. I'm actually, I used to live in Sugar Land, Merle. Did you really? Back in the day, back yeah. when I was a little a little youngster. I say little, I just mean by age. I was never little in terms of size. But I was born in Houston, lived in Sugar Land, you know? Yeah. yeah. Love the area. Well, we reached the end of the third quarter very quickly here, 29 to 13. Let's send it back down to Mr. Chuck Crazy down there in the sidelines. And uh, Chuck, good third quarter for the Pirates. Weathered the storm a little bit, got the score, or got the three points. They got themselves a 16-point lead. Hopefully they can close it out. What are your thoughts? Again, folks, Pirate Athletics would like to give a shout-out to our team. He's tweaking something. He'll be with us here in just a second. There it is. Thank you to Dr. Kevin Caperton and Chris Eagle. Can't hear you, Chuck. For your commitment and dedication over the last 10 years. We appreciate all that you do. Yeah, I think we lost him. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and keep it here because they're about ready to start the fourth quarter. Sugar Land's got one of the coolest minor league baseball teams. Oh, yeah. They the used Space to be Cowboys? The Space Cowboys, yeah. They have one of the coolest scoreboards, the shape of Texas. Yeah. I've never been out to Constellation Field, but I've heard great things about it. It's a them. cool place. The only thing I don't like about the, the Space Cowboys is a lot of our Houston crews work for the Space Cowboys. <laughs> so it's hard finding crews in Houston during baseball season. Well, back in the day, they used to be uh, the just a random like independent league affiliate, right? right? That's when Tracy McGrady was playing baseball for them. But once the Astros picked them up as the official AAA affiliate of their team, that's when a lot of a lot of buzz happened. It made a lot of sense for the Astros, obviously, right. with them being in Houston. What you got, Melvin? Fellas, real quick, and TJ's not going to like this. 
the term boat race was used all week. Right now, Oregon 13 nothing over the fighting Deion Sanders. Spriggs on the counter, trying to get the corner turn. LeBlue looking for running room. The fourth quarter gets in the way to the 20, and out of bounds at the 16-yard line. That's a nine if a six-yard pickup going to set up a third down and short. You know, like I said earlier, as long as they cover my bets. <laughs> I'm chill. As long as they cover the spread, I'm okay. That was good for a Pirate first down. It's a first down 10 to the 15-yard line. Well, love him or hate him, he's brought some love to Colorado. See, I used to hate him because he was an FSU guy, but then I used to love him because he's a Cowboys guy. Now I really love him because he's <laughs> Coach Prime. First and 10, Pirates on the move in the red zone at the 14-yard line. Remember this drive started at their own 14. Suck it up the clock, trying to punch it in. Spriggs in the shotgun. Dropping back, looking. Pass right side, and a sliding catch made it to two. Devin Phillips doing it all. There's a flag down in the backfield. See if this one's coming back. Caught that one on his backside. Yeah, he did. Hearing a lot of groans from the Pirates fans. Yeah, right this there. might be a hold. A lot of fans sitting close to the press box, so you can hear these groans uh -huh. today. They're sitting up here because that's where the shade's at. <laughs> Obviously, not a popular call. You know, I used to hate when the refs would say the number over the loudspeakers like that. Because you never get called for anything else. Oh, of course not. They never say pancake block. Oh. I was like, man, my mom's going to be mad at me today. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of first and goal at the two, it's first and 20 at the 24. Just underway fourth quarter. Pirates up by 16, trying to put some more points on the board. Phillips, left side, stutter step, looking for running room, and not going to find much. In fact, he's going to lose two yards. Going to set up a second down and 22. Devin Phillips a little slow to get up. He took a double whammy there. Yeah, someone came right at his legs, and then he got tackled right on the back. And those guys aren't small over there on the no. Panthers' side. Yeah, it's important to at least pick up maybe 10 yards here. Even if you don't get the seven now with the penalty, get it close enough for Fournier to get this a three-possession game. Yeah, we know he has the leg strength, but like you're saying, we just want to get it closer to make it more of a, a shoe-in that he'll make it. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Second down, 22 to go from the 26-yard line. Spriggs, stop and pop, rolling to his right. Fires over the right side, got a receiver, sit down, catch made at the 19-yard line. That was a good catch, plucking that one off the carpet by Mitchell Garrett. I'm not sure he really did, but the official gave it to him. As long as we're moving the, the chains a little bit, moving the down marker. Makes it third down, a long 15 from the 20-yard line. I love that little stop and pop move that Spriggs does. We almost touches the knee down at the carpet, which is dangerous because that's a dead ball. But yeah. But I think they were looking for Phillips coming out of the backfield there, but just a good job by the Panthers. They were covering him up as soon as he got out of the backfield. Third down and 15 from the 20-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the near side. Phillips lined up to the right side of Spriggs. Play clock down to five. They get it off. Zone read. Spriggs looking. He's going to swing it to Phillips out of the backfield. To the 20, to the 15. Breaks the tackle. To the 10, to the 5, and steps out of bounds at the 2. Great job by Spriggs to sell it, and then Phillips just continued his motion. He was wide open on the left side. Well, you see Spriggs in the in the pocket right there. He was going through all his reads, Merle. He checked his first one, his second one, his third one. None of them were open. He found his last call. That was a dump out pass to the running back, Phillips, and then Phillips did the rest of the work there. Great job by him avoiding the first tackle, and then getting the first down for his Pirates here. First and goal now with 12 minutes left. Pirates going for the kill shot. First and goal from the four. Sexton split wide left, two to the near side. Phillips with the carry, why not? Oh, drug down from behind. Managed to fall forward for a yard. I think it was Nate Lee, number 17, the senior, got him around the shoestring. Yeah, I was going to say that was another shoestring tackle right there. Because if not, I think Phillips is in the end zone. Second down and goal from the four.
Trips here to the near side. Spriggs dropping back, looking. Pocket breaks down, rolling to his right. Fade pattern into the end zone. Just did a good job that time throwing that one away. Save possession. Bring up a third down. And he's, he's hurt. Gomez is going to come in. Yeah, as good as Spriggs is, I think we want a fresh quarterback out there, one who can maneuver, maneuver around like yeah. we need to, especially when the pocket breaks down just like that. Because Spriggs scared me a little bit there when he floated that one up. Took me back to two weeks ago here. Yeah. <laughs> Gave me some PTSD. <laughs> So third down and goal from the four. Stop the clock with 11.05 left. Two receivers near side. Phillips lined up to the right. Gomez fakes the shuttle pass, takes it to himself. Left side driving towards the goal line, didn't get in. Fourth down and the one. Go for it. I think they do that same thing that they did on the two yard line to get a few extra yards. Go right here and I think they are. Fourth down and goal from the one. Wholesale substitutions on both sides. They're bringing in a fresh defense right there. Samuel Johnson checks in, getting a little size in. Looks like a rugby scrum. Gomez will be up on the center with everybody surrounding him. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown, but the whistles are blowing here. Hold on. I think Birmingham may have called a timeout. Not sure what this discussion is about. There are no flags down, and everybody was set on both sides of the ball, so there were no substitutions coming in or out. Don't say officials timeout. Oh. oh, boy. The dead ball with the contact made, so it takes away the touchdown. And it's going to move the ball about four inches forward. Every little bit counts, Merle. True. So we'll do it again. Gomez up under center. The question here is getting the clean exchange because they just don't do this very much up under center. Gomez oh, yeah, pushed into the end zone, waiting for the call. There it is, touchdown. Took a little bit to get the touchdown yeah. call there. I'm a little worried, but it, as many yellow jerseys that were in the end zone. <laughs> I know. It's like, so, so it had to be. He I'm, had to be in I'm there saying, somewhere. I'm saying, like, it wouldn't have made sense otherwise. So Gomez, probably the shortest touchdown run of his high school or collegiate career there. About a one-inch touchdown run. We're doing amazing things here on homecoming at Southwest University, Merle. 35 to 13, and Southwest is going to call a timeout. Looks like they want to go to two and get this up to 24 points. Either that or they were calling timeout to have, because it looked like someone's helmet came off. So that would oh, mean they want to keep that him in the game. would have to come off. Yeah. I don't know who number eight is. That's Damian. Damian Gomez, So yeah. he's the holder. So, yeah, you would need Damian to hold the True. ball. True, yeah. So I think that's more so what that was. <laughs> I can't imagine why someone would have come off. He only had about <laughs> 11 guys ripping at it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was, because Fournier is out there. I don't know who would be the holder at that point. That's not something you tech you practice a lot of as right. a, a backup holder. So 35-13, Charlie Fournier trying to make it 36. Long snap count. There we go. Good snap and hold. The kick is up. And Fournier is perfect. So 10-16 to go in regulation time. Pirates extend their lead 36-13. to Pirates in command. We'll take a break. Let's finish this one out. Southwestern Pirates football on the Vibe Live Network.
There's Charlie Fournier again with that dying quail pooch kick and field the clean this time, first down 10, or field at the 28 yard line. And Birmingham Southern with 10-16 to go, they got some work to do. Was that extra point not good? Because the no, scoreboard still says 35 to 13. They it's just like, haven't adjusted it? Yeah. Okay. They just haven't put it up there yet. Should be 36 13. Come on, man. This is a home field. Hey, it's not Southwestern employees working working the, 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 the press box. So here come the Panthers. First down and 10 at the 29 yard line. McClary in the shotgun. Dropping back, looking, pressure coming. Fires over the middle, deflected and intercepted. To the 45 to the 40. And knocked down at the 37 yard line off the tip. That was Cam Willis Roberson. And the Pirates winning the turnover battle of the day. And you kind of were waiting for that to happen. We've seen it all day. These yep. balls being tipped off the hands of the receivers for the Panthers. And just the Pirates weren't in the right place at the right time. Right there, Cam was. And what happens? He gets the pick, and the Pirates have great field position here to try and put this game away now. Yep, already up by 25, looking for more. 36 to 13. Southwestern looking for the first win of the season. First win as a member of the SAA. And Gomez will come on the field. Looks like he's going to finish this thing out. Math wasn't your subject, was it either, Merle? What's that? You said 25. I did, didn't I? 23. <laughs> we, University of Texas math, apparently. This is why we broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Gomez is going to keep it himself. Ooh, dangerous. Knocked out at the 35-yard line. He had that ball just kind of hung out there like a loaf of bread. Held onto it all the way down to the turf. Second down and eight. It was a long night last night. <laughs> Same here. You don't hear me <laughs> making excuses. Okay. <laughs> now you have to do the Yeah, you're on the road, too. All of y'all. Not easy. Like Melvin says, it's only because we love it. See, at least this year we're just doing home games. Last year when you had to go oh, man. travel and then we had to wake up at 6 a.m. to go to Alpine. Alpine, yeah. Of all places. Gomez is going to keep it himself. He's going to be wrestled to the turf back near the original line of scrimmage coming in from the backside was uh, Joey Kiernan, 6'1", 224-pound linebacker. Speaking of long road trips, Kudos and shout outs to the Birmingham Southern fans that made the trip. There's not a lot of them here, but for those who made the trip, good on them. I think they were just told they wouldn't have to listen to us if they came and watched the game in person. <laughs> this is true. Third down and nine from the 36 yard line. Clock rolling. It's the Pirates' win right now. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Gomez dropping back, looking. Quarterback draw. Big hole. To the 30, stays on his feet and knocks down inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. That looks like that's enough for a first down. Design play all the way, TJ. 100% design play all the way. He faked it just a little bit like he was going to pass, but he immediately put his head down and started running. And he took a shot there at the end. But that's the thing you do as a quarterback, as a senior for this team that wants to get a starting job back, I think. Right. You do those types of things, you get that respect, and you get that just experience back, and you're good to go. First down, Pirates. Ball spot at the 26-yard line. Pirates trying to take advantage after the turnover. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Pitch out right side of the blue. Inside the 25, stay, trying to stay in bounds, but he's, again, they're going to give him out of bounds, in bounds at the 23-yard line. I thought maybe they drug him out of bounds, but they keep the clock moving after the three-yard pickup, second down and seven. And good blocks on the right side. That's the freshman right tackle, Reed Robinson. Got his first start last week against Hendricks here today against Birmingham Southern has done a good job. He's an offensive lineman that's a lot quicker than he is strong, so they use that to his advantage. They do a lot of play designs to kind of complement that speed, like that option to the right side we just saw. A blue again, cuts it back up inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line, make it the 13. Another Pirate first down. They are moving the change. This Panther defense is gassed. Yeah, you just had a long drive by the Pirates on the last one in this hot Texas sun. You have a quick interception that the Pirates defense got, and you have to go right back out there. It's not easy to do, Merle. First down and 10 from the 13-yard line. 
Two receivers left, one to the near side. LeBlue stays in the game, lined up to the right side of Gomez. Gets the carry again. Hop step inside the 10. That's going to be good for three yards. They might get a second down and seven. Clock rolls inside of seven minutes to go. Don't forget to join us Monday night from Jack's Lounge inside the beautiful Georgetown Sheraton for SU Football Weekly. Coach Joe Austin hoping to be able to discuss the Pirates' first win six minutes and 45 seconds from now. You know, one thing I did I, I missed from this week's show, Crazy's Corner. Crazy's Corner. What I, was they, it? They were stuck with me the, the whole time. Man. Sure, he hears that. I he, know. He hears us saying good stuff about him. <laughs> <laughs> Gomez. Handoff. Up the middle. And Phillips pushing it down to the six. Chuck, you'll be with us this Monday night, won't you? He's nodding his head yes. He looks like a bobblehead right there. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and three. Coming up on the six-minute mark. Pirates up by 23. Got it right that time. Like I said, we are broadcasters <laughs> for a reason, Merle. Pirates doing a great job milking this clock down. Play clock down to 10 seconds. Taking their time. Phillips lined up to the left side of Gomez. Third down and three. Gomez is going to keep it himself, and he's going to step into the end zone for the touchdown. Icing on the homecoming cake for Southwestern. Just a great play design overall. They've been killing them with that counter out to the right side. They fake that counter, go right up the middle with Gomez. It's just beautiful. Yeah, as a former offensive lineman, Merle, that is beautiful. And how about the job those guys did on this drive? I mean, they're, they're, you know, most of it coming on the ground. They, they're clearing the pass. For as many questions as there were coming into this game, throughout the game, I think they've answered all of those questions. And I think the Pirates, from an offensive line perspective, should be good to go. Charlie Fournier for the extra point. Good snap and hold. Fournier knocks it through to bring the Pirates to Richard Petty, 43 to 13. We'll take a quick break, be back to close this one out. Pirates in command, up by 30. Southwestern Pirates football on the Vipe Live Network. A 30-point Pirate Bulge with 5.42 to go in the fourth quarter. Merle Bertrand here along with T.J. Vela, Mel Melvin Jones, Michael Rose, Harlan Hudson, and the coach, Les Clary, keeping an eye on an ear in the broadcast to make sure that we're staying on the air and looking and sounding good. That's 20 with another short high pooch kick. That's a live football again, and they got out of time. It's a 35-yard line. Can't let that thing hit the ground. Yeah, I don't know what that guy was doing right there, calling off his teammate. It looked like he was going to settle right under it. It wasn't like they can get a good return out of it. You right. might as well just do the fair catch. But luckily enough for the Panthers, nothing crazy happened. Because the Pirates get that one, then it's really over at yeah. that point. Yeah, yep. Well, Melvin will be cutting together the highlight package for us for Monday Night Show. This one should be a lot more fun to cut together, Melvin, than the one was a couple of weeks ago, right? Absolutely. Uh, a little more to work with? A lot of Pirates scoring, so that's what we were looking for a couple of weeks ago, and we got it today. 43 points for Southwestern. Trips wide right, one of the near side. McClary dropping back, looking. Pocket breaks down, steps up, rolling to his right, keeps it alive. And juggled and caught to the 35 to the 30, somehow 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Birmingham Southern. They, when they score, they score quick, TJ. And I think that's very similar to the two other touchdowns. Blown assignments, just a lot of... When, when the quarterback has that much time to throw, it gives the right receivers a lot of opportunity to get away from their corners. Right. And then we saw there the deep safety didn't make a play on the ball. He didn't tackle the wide receiver. And so when that happens, obviously he can squeeze through that gap and run to the end zone like we just saw, just blown assignments hurting this Pirates defense. So 43 to 19 now with the extra point pending. 
Hives should be getting their hands team ready. Good snap and hold. Low line drive kick over the field house into the parking lot. But it splits the upright, and that's all that matters. So 43 to 20 with 523 to go. Still a three possession game, but you just hate giving up that kind of a quick strike. Yeah, and it's going to be imperative for the Pirates here to stay on the field offensively. Right. We cannot afford a three and out here. We cannot afford to give the ball right back to the Panthers because like we just saw, like we've seen two other times today, they can score super quickly. And even up three scores with five minutes, 23 seconds left. No lead is safe, Merle. Well, we talked about it back in the first quarter. The Pirates have come back on people from a similar margin with similar amounts of time left. So, And honestly, if I'm Coach Austin here, I want to go score. I want to put up a 50-piece on exactly, someone. Exactly, yeah. We've had a 50-piece put on us three times this year. Go put it on someone else today. Fellas, real quick, UTSA down 14 nothing in the first quarter to the Tennessee Volunteers. Is Frank Harris playing? I have no clue. I think so. Or is he hurt still? I think he's uh, playing this week. The road runners are running a lot of roads today to go all the way to Tennessee. I love the Alamo Dome. As a broadcaster, I just oh, love you've broadcasted it a couple times. Yeah, That's playoff cool. games. It's cool because I'm not a fan of dome stadiums, but when you're there, the windows open up, and so it's oh, like an cool. open. Yeah, you know, the crowd's right below you. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, Michael Mike Rose has been there as well. Kickoff is going to be into and out of the end zone. I started off this season in the Alamo Dome. You did, yeah. Yep, filling in for Austin Crockett for us. It's a cool place. As a fan, I love it. I couldn't even imagine uh, as a broadcaster. Not a great place for basketball championship games. They uh, do the UIL cha basketball championships there, and it's not great for basketball. Yeah, the Spurs used to play there, and I just I just don't understand. They did last year, too. They That's broke true. the NBA yeah. record for attendance. But, yeah, you're watching from the nosebleeds. What's yeah. the point? <laughs> it's like the Final Four. Every year they do them in a football stadium. No, I don't want to spend 300 bucks to go watch a game from the nosebleeds. <laughs> Rather go to Little Woodrose and spend 300 bucks there. <laughs> T.J. Vale is going to be working on them for sponsorship now and next time. Trust me. I am a regular at Little Woodrow's Real. We will get the Tech Ridge location to be our sponsor. So Pirate football first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Just got to hang on to it. Bleed the clock out. Gomez. Hand off. Ooh, that's going to be a face mask, yeah. and there it is. Wow. That's either a face mask or a horse collar or both. He was picking his nose up in there. <laughs> Devin Phillips on the carry, four harder in yards, and some neck extensions as a bonus. 24 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Don't forget the email still open, southwesternfb at gmail.com. You can give your comments in the broadcast. We'd love to hear from you. And just like the comments in the stands, you can't do that. <laughs> First down, Pirates at the 45 after the penalty. Clock rolling, coming up at the five-minute mark. Gomez, got to keep it himself. Shedding tacklers and gets across the 50. Ball. Ball out. Bumble came out. The way that they got excited on the Birmingham sideline. I thought Gomez was down. Nope. Nope, it's going to be Panther football at the 50-yard line. And Gomez is a little slow to get up. I think that's more so from losing the fumble yeah. than anything else. So that's what you don't want. Give these guys any chance of life. 4.51 to go. 23-point lead, but they've got the ball near the midfield stripe. The first Southwestern turnover. It is, yeah. I thought we were going to go a full game without one. So challenge the defense. Got to get a stop here. Two receivers to the near side, two wide right. Still work to be done. McClary in the shotgun. He's dropping back. That's actually a new quarterback, I think. Pass over to the right side and batted away incomplete. 
This is Joseph Cummings in a quarterback, a sophomore out of Independence High School in Spring Hill, Tennessee. So you, wonder, you almost wonder if something happened to McCleary? Yeah. Or, or this game is not out of reach yet. Or maybe we just miss Cummings coming in on the last drive. That's possible, too. Second down and 10 from the 50. Cummings dropping back, looking. And batted away. Great job there. Timed it perfectly. Did Kadari Isa reach around and poked it away. Third down and 10 coming up. And you're right, Merle. He timed it perfectly because if he was there a second later, yep. that is going to be a huge gain for the Panther offense. And if he's there a second earlier, it's pass interference. So. It looks like McClary's coming back in or a new running back's coming in. I want to say it's Mitch Thompson back there now as a running back. Yep, that is exactly who it is. Third down and 10 from the 50. Cummings dropping back. Pressure coming from the edge. He's going to tuck it under and run and slide down the 47-yard line. That's going to be a flag and maybe. And now Tempers Flair. Now, to be fair, he was sliding, but it was a late slide. That's a bang-bang play. He was yeah. barely getting into a slide as Corkin was already getting there, launching himself. But it looks bad because the helmet came right. off and his body was lower. But hopefully this is not called targeting because losing Corkin for the rest of this game and then for the next game right. would be terrible. Replay. But that, if you heard someone just say replay, that is something you can review in D3 now is targeting. True. So they do call that targeting. He'll have to come out of the game. He didn't say seven was ejected. That's true. That's true. Which, I mean, targeting means you get ejected. Yep, here it comes. Number seven is disqualified from the remainder of the game. Boy, that's a tough break. That's all set up by the turnover. But again, they're going to look at this after this game, and they're going to really determine if that was targeting because we cannot lose Blaine Corkett for next week. Right. So hopefully that's overturned after this contest. The first down and 10 at the 33-yard line, 435 to go. Panthers have the first down. Cummings dropping back, looking. Fade pattern, left side, and incomplete. Threw that one up into double coverage. Pretty good throw, stride for stride with him. Was Graham Neal look like? You know, going back to that last play, Merle, what sucks is that it would have been a fourth and five. That's true. Had the penalty yeah. not been called. Obviously, we can't change what happened, but you know, the Pirates could have got off the field there. Now it's second and ten, four minutes, 25 seconds left. Check that. that was DJ, DJ James, number 14. I read the roster wrong. I had the wrong number 14. That makes more sense. The defensive back on the coverage, second down and 10 from the 33 yard line. Two receivers right to the near side. Second down and 10 from the 33. Cummings dropping back. Pass over the center of the field, intercepted. To the 15 to the 20, up to the 25 to the 26 yard line. Thrown perfectly to Cam Willis Robertson. That's the second one of the ball game, correct? So nice he had to do it twice. Yeah. A bad throw, an overthrown ball to the nut to another receiver. And again, right place, right time. Cam Willis Robertson right there. And the Pirates get one back after that big targeting call that extended the drive of the Panthers. So now 417 to go. Pirates protect the 23-point lead. The offense will come back on the field, try to close this thing out. And this is where you rely on Damian Gomez. Hey, we need a long drive here. We yeah. want to burn time off this clock. We want to get out of here. Panthers have all three of their timeouts. First down and 10 Southwestern at the 28-yard line. 
Handoff up the middle. Breaking tackles. Bouncer to the outside. 35 to the 40. Trying to stay in bounds. Phillips to the 40. Breaks free and now he's going to step out of bounds at the 45 yard line. That's the only downside as Phillips stepped out of bounds. I think he was surprised that he was still running. He just kept his legs turning right there and no one was willing to bring him down. And that's a sign of a good running back right there. If you just keep your legs moving, if no one's going to bring you down, just keep going. Just keep going, yeah. First down at the 46-yard line. Checking to see if he's up over 100 yards. He's, he's got to be close. Be, yeah. The clock's moving now after they reset the chains. Two receivers left, one to the near side. He can milk another 10 seconds off the play clock here. 24 carries, 131 yards for Phillips. Well, 130 now as he loses the yard. I jinxed him. The announcer jinx. The voodoo. <laughs> It's all right. He held out of the football, and the clock will continue to run here as it come up on the three-minute mark. You know, I think the most impressive thing so far is, yes, we've talked about this new offensive line, this young offensive line. The Panthers have had seven people in the box this whole game, and we've still been running the ball right great down point. their throat. Taking up, Panther, taking up Panther on the play. That is number 24, Campbell Garner, a junior linebacker. It's been a physical game. Very physical. And I think that's something that the Pirates are used to coming from the ASC. That's one of the more physical conferences in Division Three football, I'd say. But the SAA is no joke either. Right. They got a lot of great teams. Trinity's in it. Hendricks is in it. Millsaps. Sewanee. Those are all very physical teams. But that's the style of football that Southwestern's loved for years. So they're used to it. And, you know, as we think about this freshman-heavy team, they're getting used to it right. for the Pirates. And it's been Fun to see that development over the past four weeks. Third down and nine from the 47-yard line. They can bleed another 30 seconds off the play clock. Well, Coach talked about it. The SAA is used to having two teams in the playoffs. So you're a conference champion and then the at-large bid. Yeah. Well, so Birmingham Southern was one of those teams that was regularly going to the playoffs right. for a long time. They were ranked at the start of the year, too. Clock rolling, 2.15 to go. They still have another 10 seconds on the play clock. So the Pirates doing a great job of Letting that clock bleed out. Gomez with Phillips on the right side. Handoff up the middle and gets off to the 50. Going to bring up a fourth down. We're going to get a timeout called here. Melvin, you got any other interesting scoring updates for us? I'm sure people are tired of those Vibe commercials by now. Well, it is 21 nothing now in Eugene. Cover the spread, baby. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> Also going on right now in Tuscaloosa. Ole Miss with a 7-6 lead over number 13, Alabama. Duke, 17-0 over UConn. Miami, 17-0 over Temple. And as we said earlier, 14-0 Tennessee over UTSA. UConn has a football team? I thought they were just a basketball school. They are. They are. <laughs> that's, that's why they're still independent. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I was saying, Bama is, like, ripe to lose at home to Ole Miss because, like, the way they played last week against USF and then the, the way they played before against Texas, it just yeah. seemed like – They're they having a lot of uh, quarterback problems right now. Yeah. Well, you know, you're used to winning, winning, winning when Texas bloodies their nose. It's hard sometimes for those elite programs to regroup. They That's don't true. have to do it very often. And it's not like their SEC uh, conference is easy to play in. That's true. Got a tough year ahead of them if uh, they're struggling against teams like US USF and Ole Miss. Fournier set to punt it away. He'll hit it from about the 40-yard line. Spiral kick into the afternoon sun. A late fair catch call for him made at the 12-yard line. So Birmingham Southern will get it back with 153 to go. It hasn't come easy, TJ, but it looks like the Pirates are going to get that first win. I think that's just a metaphor for life, Merle. Nothing ever comes easy. Deep Talk by T.J. Vela. We're optimistic. We're philosophical. We love introspection. This is what a Southwestern education can do for you. <laughs> to all the recruits listening, come to Southwestern. You don't get that kind of experience anywhere else. So Panthers from the 11-yard line, moving from right to left, 153 to go. Game seems to be in hand, but the Pirates don't want to give up another score here. Cummings dropping back, and he's going to go down. 
I think that's our first sack of the day. It is. And Malik McDonald, I think, is the one who got it. You were kind of just waiting for it. It was like you had all these times where the pressure was applied, but the quarterback just got away. It was like, when is he going to just not you know, feel that pressure for a second and let Malik McDonald or Marion Williams Jack get in there? And finally, it happened there. Well, also four, second and 14. Cummings dropping back, looking, firing over the center of the field, and incomplete. Good coverage there by Jamarcus Ross. Senior out of West Orange Stark. Stops the clock with 118 to go third down and 14. Fans filing for the leftovers to tailgate. They want to make the volleyball game happen at six today. Dropping back. Rolling to his right is Cummings. And going to be drugged down at the 13-yard line. Good hustle over there to try to keep him in bounds. Didn't quite get there in time, but a great effort. And that's the Blaine Corkin replacement, number 34, Jake Sefzik. A freshman right there making a great play. I'm glad you had that because my roster goes from 33 to 35. Yeah, it's, he's not on the, on the roster. He's on the two-man, On man, the two-deep, okay, yeah. That's because I was looking here, couldn't find it. But he's on the two-man. 6'3", freshman, 190. Oh, good hustle. If Corkin is out next week, he's going to get an education this week. Fourth down at about eight. They'll have to punt it away. And a good stand by the Pirate defense. A booming punt. That's a beauty. This Man, that thing, that thing is going to go it. about 80 yards. Still rolling inside the 15. Finally out of bounds at the 12. That was a 77-yard punt with no return. That'll, that'll do one to three your average. Yeah, he appreciated that one. I, I, obviously, the Southwestern return men didn't need to get it because it kept the clock going. Right. So the punter always appreciates that, I'm sure. 63 ticks on the clock. Again, don't forget to come out to the Georgetown Sheraton Monday night, 6 o'clock, Jack's Lounge for SC Football Weekly. Coach Joe Austin will be there. More importantly, Chuck Crazy will be there. I'll be there too, I guess. Say, if you're not there, the show doesn't happen, bro. <laughs> we'll have highlights, player guests, and set the table for the Pirates next game next week as they travel to Tennessee to take on Rhodes College. Gomez just going to take a knee. Take the hit on the stats. I'll have to do it one more time here. Should be a fun show Monday night. Pirates get to celebrate their first one of the season after coming up short just a couple of times. And I think when you think of this game, Merle, a lot of what y'all talked about on the show and what we've talked about before on the broadcast of the turnover issues, the playing consistently, that today... For the most part, we saw a lot of that. Yep. They did really well keep holding on to the ball. They did really well playing consistently on both sides of the ball. Even special teams got involved. And right now, what's the outcome? A Southwestern win, their first of the season, and their first of this new conference. Yeah, 4-3 to three to 20. The clock is ticking down, only 15 seconds away. The Pirates are going to get that win, 4-3 to three to 20. And uh, we'll stick around here and wait for Coach uh, or for Chuck Grace to inter intercept Coach uh, Austin after Coach Anderson uh, so it says congratulations across the way. You said it, TJ, a good team win. All phases of the game played well and uh, took to the coaching well. They made the adjustments that the coaching staff asked them to make. And I think, too, when we look at it, most impressively, it wasn't one guy. It right. was a lot of Pirates football players. Obviously, the offensive line, a lot of fill-ins there. The running back position. Where did De Devin Phillips come from? Like, I, I he know. was a guy that we didn't even think of at the beginning of the year. Sam LeBlue, Christian Reeves, quarterback position. We saw it there, too. Damian Gomez coming in when uh, Jalen Spriggs got hurt. We saw a lot of wide receivers, Dugan Sexton, Mitchell Garrett. They were getting involved. If the Pirates are going to be good this year, if they're going to continue winning in this new conference, I think that's what it takes. Getting everyone involved and making sure everyone, all the athletes, touch the ball at least once a game. Teams exchanging the post-game handshake. Everything seems to be peaceful. Not a whole lot of chippiness, maybe after a late hit or two, but you would expect that. It's 
I would guess that Blaine Corkin went over to Cummings and, you know, not necessarily apologized, but at least explained himself. It looked like he was coming back from that side of the field. So Yeah, I think I think it was a bang bang play. It was Blaine yeah. Corkin's not that type of player to just go head hunting like that. He plays uh, very aggressively. Like don't get us wrong. But he's not gonna be dirty with it. He's not gonna do anything that'll get him picked out of the game like that. Well, I'll be curious what uh what the ruling is. Yes, Cummings was sliding, but it was a late slide. Yeah. Hopefully for the Pirates and their defense, we can get that overturned. <laughs> As everyone's piling around the band, it's time to sing the fight song. It's always more fun when you win, right? Always more fun, especially on homecoming. All right, I think Coach is about ready to make his way. Hopefully Chuck sees him. Hopefully he sees Chuck. Yeah, all that yellow down there is kind of uh -huh. camouflaged. You put a pair of pads on Chuck. I think he's about to play football. <laughs> yeah. Need some help on the offensive line, right? <laughs> all right, I think he, well, nope. Coach is still uh, greeting some of his players. And he's got a player guest as well. So, uh, Chuck, I'm going to let you take it away down there. Uh, so we're here with, with Cameron. Cameron, you, you had a multi-interception game, actually three of them. Why don't you talk about each one for the audience? And then after you catch it, you, 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 you make yards after that reception. So, uh, you, you know, obviously you don't want to be singled out. Uh, you had a really great team effort defensively. Talk about your, your secondary unit. You had some younger guys out there today. Uh, they played really well against a pretty good offense. First week starting, a lot of freshmen out there, but our personnel is really great. Coach put in a great position. Also helps when the guys on the front part of the defensive line are getting pressure on that quarterback. Yes, sir. You want to talk about those big guys a little bit? They come out to work this week. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Sir, good luck you. this week. Right, Caitlin Spriggs, how are you? I'm doing well. Speak up a little bit, okay? Uh, you got your first start, right? Collegiate start. You came out and the offense uh, was hitting on, on pretty much all cylinders after that first initial uh, pickup of a drive, right? Uh, talk a little bit about your experience this week and your, your running back crew, which was uh, buried and, and, and uh, very deep. Yes, the running back crew was very, very deep. You know, we come in and practice. We're after your game plan. And you got a little nicked up uh, a little late here in the second half. Uh, do you feel okay? You're good to go? Yes, sir. Okay, well, good luck this week, all right? Thank you. Good luck. All right, Coach uh, Austin, you got your first uh, conference win this for this season this week. Uh, you, you had contributions from all over the field. You had special teams, defense, offense. You had some young guys really step up today. Talk about that. Well, you know, where to start? Other than three plays on defense, it was really, really good. Things that coaches immediately think about, right? Um, we have some great contributions. You talked to two of them. Cam in his first game, he got a lot of action, three interceptions. Jalen's first start. Uh, we never, we never trailed. Jalen let us down. We took seven. Nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven we never trailed the game. Um, our offensive line hung in there. Asked him about that at halftime. They're a tired, beat up group. They hung in there. Our D line continued to try to. It's a really solid overall game. I thought we did pretty well on special teams. So. We can still get a lot better. We made it a little more interesting at the end there than we had to, uh, but definitely a lot better than we've seen the first three. Well, you're getting tired of, of making it where you can make mistakes easier. But you mentioned special teams, Coach. Did y'all see something on film that uh, y'all decided to target on those early kick attempts by Birmingham? Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, we had we had our players ready. I think in all of our phases, um, we blocked kicks and scored. Um, we did some really nice things with that pickoff. Charlie is a weapon. I mean, some kickers can just kick touchbacks. Charlie can kick touchbacks, but he can place them. Right. Like if, if he, it's like golfers want to be able to hit the wedge shots that he can hit. Uh, so we, we placed the ball. We're taking teams return game out of out of the picture. So, yeah, credit, a lot of credit goes to Charlie and our players for understanding, you know, what their rules are and how to cover those kicks. We'll go uh, pour over that film, Coach. We'll talk to you on Monday at SU Football Weekly. All right. We'll see you then. Thanks.
There you go, Merle. Pretty happy all the way around for Southwestern University Pirates. Yeah, a good, a good team win, Chuck. And uh, thanks for pointing out that it was three interceptions. TJ and I had two, so we both failed the math on that one. So I'm glad you pointed yeah, out it was three well, interceptions. I heard it. Well, I made a mistake, too. And, and I think you know, when you tried to go to me at the end of the third, not that this is important for the broadcast, but my equipment was overheated from the sun. So that just shows you – how hot it was down here. Yeah, I, I can't imagine any reason why it would be overheated. It's only 105 degrees again. Well, also, yeah, I think it's more like 125 on this surface. You're, you're probably right. Well, get out of it. We'll see him on the night at the an air-conditioned Jack's Lounge at the Georgetown Sheraton. Can't wait. It's going to be fun. Thanks, Chuck. All right, TJ. Good win here for the Pirates. I'm trying to get the uh, – the uh, stats pulled up here real quick if I can. Should have been do doing that while they were talking. Uh, Pirates, let's see here. Total yards. They overcame that halftime uh, deficit, 463 to 377 wow. for Southwest. And they really poured it on in the second half. And, uh, yeah, just, a, just the one turnover uh, that they committed late in the ball game. Devin Phillips with 26 carries, 132 yards. Jalen Springs, 9 out of 20, 152 yards. Two touchdowns rushing, 73 yards uh, passing 73 yards rushing, and uh, the pirate defense is doing a great job all the way around. And we're on camera now, so we got to behave ourselves <laughs> like we weren't behaving already. Murray. Right, Come right. On. So, but yeah, just just a good team win here for the Pirates. No, I agree with you on that one. I look at the stats right there. Seven people were rushing, so it's yeah. like this right here. I think is a testament to how deep the Pirates' offense is. Um, and it's going to be something that we need to rely on the rest of the year. Like I was saying at the end of the game, if everyone if everyone can get involved offensively. It's going to be a great year for the Pirates in this conference. Now, how hard is it? They got one. They're one and three. How hard is it to build on that, especially with the road game coming up next week? It's super hard. It's not easy to do, but that's why they come out here and play college football at Southwestern University. Nothing's ever easy. Nothing is ever given to us, but that's why we're Pirates. It's a challenge, and we always approach that challenge head on. Melvin, final thoughts here before I let you go. I'll come back to you one last time as well, TJ, so be thinking. I mean, it was a great, great, fantastic victory for the Pirates. A lot improved for the last two weeks. Time to build off of it now. Go on the road next week, and then two weeks hosting Barry here. Let's see how much this team has improved within the next two weeks. Brand new conference. Team got, got a lot of room to grow, so we'll see how far they will take it as the season progresses. That's a great point, Melvin. They're so young, TJ. There yep. are so many, I mean, we saw it today, so many freshmen, especially on the offensive side of the ball. No, they're very young, but I think – they're not playing like they're young. Murray. No, they're not. That's the yeah. thing. They're playing like they're season vets. We said that about the offensive line. Jalen Spriggs, Devin Phillips, like they look like they've been playing football together for years. Like just the athleticism, the football knowledge that these kids have. I'm excited to see what they do the rest of the year. Well, we'll, uh, we'll be back with you in two weeks. The Pirates will be on the road next week. You'll be able to check uh, catch out the, that broadcast if you don't make the trip on southwesternpirates.com as the Pirates travel to Tennessee to take on Rhodes College. Our next broadcast will be two weeks from today, as Melvin mentioned, against uh, uh, Barry. Barry. That's right, yep. Barry. So uh, we'll be back with you two weeks from today. That's going to wrap it up for us here this afternoon. I want to thank my broadcast partner, Mr. T.J. Vela, once again. Awesome job. Melvin Jones, our producer. Michael Rose and Harlan Hudson doing a great job on camera. Our technical director, Sunil Vincott, and the coach, Les Clary, keeping an eye on the ear on the broadcast to make sure that we stayed on the air and looked and sounded as good as we possibly could. And you for tuning in. Don't forget, come out to uh, Jack's Lounge on the beautiful Georgetown Sheraton Monday night, 6 o'clock, for SU Football Weekly with Joe Austin. My name is Merle Birch, and signing out the Pirates with a big win at homecoming weekend by a final score of 43-20. to 20. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you in a couple weeks right here on Vibe. Good night, everybody. Pirates fight for Old Southwestern, so I'm a modern deer. Pirates fight for Old Southwestern, <laughs> to Southwestern will be loyal to the sun from from the sky and remember to the end that a fight will never die. Pirates fight.